from watching this, I think the only place he lost his points for line is outside zone two. He left it tad bit early, and in style, uh, I have to look over it again. Uh, but there's a one point deduction in style, which is pretty much a perfect run. 97 is a very, very high run. Right there at the outside zone three, he's like right on the line. That might be a point or two deduction from the line instead of the outside zone two area, but a very technical run by Masayama. He's in the same car this year, so we can see he can mirror image and do that one more time because the track is pretty much the same. And uh, let's see how he's going to do for the qualify today. All right, so now we're going to see some of the crashes that we saw, uh, the unfortunate crash that we saw from last year, 2022 here. Uh, trying a little too hard and not making it through the outside zone one, you do end up going into. You do have a sponge barrier but on the other side of that, it's pretty much a concrete wall, and uh, some of these cars uh, ended up being in the concrete wall. Right here, this might be the worst one. Kazama gets in between, he gets in between the uh, sponge walls manages his car uh, to smash the rear end of it, so the bumper got pushed all the way to the, the drivetrain. But yeah, but their his team was able to get it back on the track and ready to go, so... Oh, like, uh, I'm just gonna show you that. Um, We're trying to square away the English side live stream, so those of you that are on the Japanese side right now checking us out, um, they're squaring it away, trying to get it fixed, and get us back online. All right, here we are. This is the point standings. Like Robbie was saying, 11 drivers, 100 points from one another. It could be anybody's game. But you can see right there that top five drivers, top four drivers right now, they're within points of each other. Yeah, so number four, uh, Kohashi is fourth. He's like 20 points away. Hiroya Minoa is first. Kazumi Takashi is second. They're only eight points away. Then one point away uh, is Kodai Sobagiri sitting in third. So looking at the scoring right now, as of now, any of these 11 drivers are capable of winning the championship, uh, depending on how everybody comes out. So we got uh, Minoa, Takahashi, Sobagiri, Kohashi, Suenaga, Hibino, Kengushi, uh, Yukio Faust, uh, Kanta, Matsuyama, and Kusaba. That's what I like to see though. This is a second to last event, but here we are. This is Hiroya Minoa, just turned 14 years old. 先日8月15日お誕生日を迎えました。井上平也選手のピットに来ています。おめでとうございます。改めて何歳になったんですか。そしてプレゼントまだということなので何がいいのかカメラに向かってお願いします。はい、えっと14歳になりました。えっとでプ
unless otherwise we're just talking to nobody. <laughs> exactly. But there we are right there, the G-Shock. This is what it is. It's a sponsored event by G-Shock. Here it is, round five, Grand Snow, Okuibuki. You can see the cars lined up, ready to make it happen. Roughly 44 cars that are going to be competing for the top 32 spot today. We'll see who's going to be going home and who's going to land that top qualified position. I mean, everybody's going home eventually, right? I mean, except us. Yeah, we're going to be stuck here. Because we're going to be back next year. Next, next week. Next week. And also for the FDJ2 and J3 round that we have, probably going to be a different layout on the track. But uh, we are here uh, back for another Okubuki goodness. So all we're waiting for here, they're about to kick it off in about just a few more minutes. I bet about a minute or so they're going to start us off. Looks like the first driver is already in the burnout box. There you are. You can see the crowd out here fighting this heat with us. So Tsubasa Nagasawa, you can see him on the screen right there. And his hardcore Rocket Bunny Racing Hot Wheels R32. Beautiful build, debuted it last round. Came out showing us what he's got, but it looks like he's a little timid in this new car. His old R32 that he was in, he was killing it. But yeah, you know, you know, sometimes, I'm not sure if it is this case, is his case, but I remember when I got into a brand new car, it was really hard to kind of push it to the limit just because it was a brand new build. And when you're in your old, you know, um, you know, car that you're so used to and you've driven so many times and like let's say you know that's a little dinged up you're a lot more less worried about you know anything happening to the car and that may be the case too but also you know a brand new build even if you're using the same parts and everything that may not mean the same because you know different chassis um, he had a four door before the two door maybe it handles a little bit different uh the way it sits and you know the width of the car and so forth might be a little different than what he had before so uh all that stuff might come into play We'll see here, he's gonna start us off. Looks like he's got the green light ready to go. Here he is coming through the chicane to start us off right. Approaching this 3-2-1. Let's see how Nagasawa is gonna do here in his R32 skyline. Bring it through that 3-2-1. Oh! You can see how he straightened up, leaving that, like I said, that momentum that you have to carry up to that outer zone one, really have to gun it up to the 3-2-1 to finish it. Because a lot of speed gets lost into that outer zone one when they start approaching it. Yeah, the tip, the tip. Uh, there is a, how can I say it, uh, like you said, you know, you do need the, you need the um, momentum coming up the hill, and it looks, I mean, that looks like a, that looks like a ratchet strap or something. Yeah, it looks like it flew off, they're picking it up off the course right now, yeah, it looks like a green ratchet strap, like you were saying. And look at that, you can see, coming around the bend, trying to fill that outer zone three right there. A little hesitation through it. And uh, the screen said, F -E, it said Formula Drift J2, it was not FD J2, it was said Formula Drift Japan. Sorry about that, guys. Not my mistake, but... Robbie will take the blame. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take the blame, no problem. I'm sorry. So yeah, it's going to be an incomplete, most likely, for uh, Tsubasa Nagazawa's first run. Luckily, we don't do the knockout qualifying here. We do run all, or both of the qualifying runs for all the drivers all the way to the end. So they do, everybody has a chance to get a second run and also uh, still be on top, uh, be a top qualifier. Yeah, and it always comes down to that very end for that last driver. He usually locks in an insane score. We've had that a few times this year where they stole the limelight from that middle guy that was uh, first in qualify points. But there you are, the official right there. Nagasawa is going to get it incomplete and a zero for his first qualify run. All right, next up, sitting at the line, and he's ready to go, is Junji Yamamoto, number seven, in the Good Ride 2JZ FD3S project. We'll see how he's going to do. He likes to throw a lot of angle. He's a little wild out there, but He's had a little bit of a struggle throughout practice yesterday and today, and so we're gonna see if he can throw down a solid run, get in the zones, and make it happen. Here he is screaming up through the 3 2 one into this outer zone one, getting into that zone, looks like he, oh, he held off a little bit too much, didn't get right back on it, calling, causing him to lose the stall out at the outer zone one and straightening. So 
yeah, needless to say, that'll be an incomplete for his first qualifier run. Yeah, so it looked like he threw it in really hard, waiting for it to settle, waited a little too long and lost his momentum. So, uh, Hopefully he can uh, put together a better run for the second one. Yeah, he's kind of been struggling all season to get that car right. Hopefully we'll see more out of him. But there you are. The official score for Yamamoto is going to be an incomplete, a zero. We'll see how he's going to do on his second qualify run. All right, next sitting at the line, ready to go, is number 73, Ugo Saito in the Motis West Auto R35 GTR. He was driving at JZX100 last year. Here he is in his new platform that he debuted first round at Suzuka Twin. We're going to see how he's going to do. Looks like he's been struggling throughout the season to get this car right. But here he is coming in at 3-2-1. Got a lot more momentum with that big body coming back around into this outer zone two here. Not able to get all the way out to that zone, bringing it back around early on right there through outer zone three, dipping two tires, bringing it into this outer zone four, just on the inside edge of that outer zone four. So definitely uh, missed some of the zones, a little bit too deep into that outer zone three. We'll see what the judge is. That's our first complete run that we're getting out here. Yeah, so outside zone one, he does dip a tire right before he gets into the outside zone uh, at the initiation area. And as a line judge, I do have to deduct. But uh, he doesn't reach outside zone two uh, too deep. Dips two tires at outside zone three, then comes back in, back in doesn't finish the outside zone three, and uh, doesn't fill the outside zone four. So as a line score, not going to be... Uh, one of the highest for sure, uh, but really depends on uh, what the other judges have in mind as well for how the run was. Yeah, but looks like we're going to have our po first points on the board and first driver to get points on the board, so we're going to see what his qualify run is going to look like. And there we are, Saito getting a 71 for his first qualify run. You can see his line definitely got heavily affected from where he found himself in those zones. Yeah, and you know, before style, and we always talk about the forward style and the angle part of it, I mean, if you're on the edge of the line, anybody can get 30 points. And it, you know, it's not as easy as I just said, but uh, doing it with angle, if you have an okay amount of angle, let's say if you get 20 points in angle, 30 points in style and line, you'll get an 80. Yep, and here we are, Nagayasu Miyagi in the car guy racing. ZN686 coming around that outer zone one. Oh, just hanging on, not able to get to that outer zone two. It looks like he's finding himself in the wrong gear through that outer zone three there. You can hear it bogging down a little bit. Wow, that's not gonna be a good line score because yeah. he was not anywhere near the box at outside zone two. He did okay at outside zone one, I would have to say. He does fill the zone, dips the tire before it, uh, doesn't go all the way deep, but fills the zone pretty good. Right there, nowhere near outside zone two. Right there, nowhere near outside zone three. So as a line score, I'm going to have to definitely ding in for that. Um, yeah, you could definitely see him through that outer zone three, like trying to get the car. He, had, he looked like he was in the wrong gear. He was clutch kicking a little bit, but unfortunately, um, couldn't get his car to travel all the way out into that zone, which obviously, like Robbie always says, every round, if you start off wrong in the line of the track, you're gonna mess the rest of it up. It's kind of kind of hard to get yourself back. Yeah, because these courses are designed to have a pretty good flow to it. Um, you know, even if you have to, or even if you have like, you know, there's different dynamics to every track and every corner, but uh, you know, the flow has to be right. But that's a 63, uh, 63 for Miyagi's first run. All right, at the line, ready to go is going to be number 41, Chichi Uemura and his TMS Racing Team Cylon Tire, Uemura Sangyo, JZX100 Mark II. Yeah, so Uemura uh, seemed like he was a little bit scared of this wall. So he was doing too hot during qualifying. Well, here he is coming in hot right here through the outer zone one, taking it short right there, almost getting into making an inside clip through that outer zone one, bringing it back around to the outer zone three. And like Robbie said, he struggled throughout practice, able to fill that outer zone three, but the start was just not ideal. Very dangerous approach, like he said. It looks like he's still a little timid approaching that big wall at outer zone one. Yeah, so outside zone one, that's 
you know, pretty much about 10 points for the line. He totally missed it. So that's going to be easy to say that there's no way he's going to get higher than a 20 for a line score. Hopefully you guys understand how we're doing this. Um, and uh, the way the U.S. does it is the same. We, all the judges just break it down. It's just that we have three judges that actually goes over the three different criteria. So here we are, official score, 74 Uemura. Well, you know what? I mean, that's kind of high for how that run was, the 74. That's <laughs> just my opinion. But uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next driver. Next driver at the line is going to be number 86, Kenichi Takashima in the Team Kazama with Power Vehicle JZX100 Chaser. Team Kazama coming out with a fleet of cars out here to compete. We're going to see how they could do, how they're going to pan out for the rest of these guys out here. Here he is coming around, coming in hot into this outer zone one. Filling that zone right on the inside edge, but getting into that zone, bringing it back around into this outer zone two. Not bad. Here he is switching back around to this outer zone three. Filling that zone right on that back edge. Nice job. Oh, wow. Nice job overall. Looks like he was a little, oh, and almost lost it right oh, there in the wall. But yeah, came through the finish with a drift, so he finished the course out. Yeah, so let's go over the uh, replay one more time, just double checking. He's not right on the edge, but his bumper is hovering over uh, the 10 point area in outside zone one, does a good job outside zone two. Outside zone three gets in a little bit late, but does manage to fill the zone uh, fairly good. So I would have to say that's a pretty good run for uh, Takashima. Yeah, the only thing I could see him improving on is making it a little bit more dynamic, you know, coming in with a little bit more flair. But other than that, like Ravi said, the zones were, you know, pretty much well filled by him. We'll see what the total score is for all three judges. And there's the pits right there. Yeah, so we can't even talk to you guys, or the live stream. Ah, oh, 79 right there, leading the points right now. Highest score we got. All right, next at the line, it's a good ride vehicle right here, number 19, Yuchi Amagai in the Good Ride Motorsports with Perfect Style S15. Amagai, we were talking during the practice uh, that they had yesterday and today. It looks like he's just been struggling throughout the season. A slow decline in his driving, but we're going to see how he's going to perform here today. If he could brush that all off behind him, here it is, round five. Let's see how he's going to do on his first qualified run. Coming around to the outer zone one here, right on that inside edge of that zone. Could be a little bit deeper through outer zone one and outer zone two. Got to clean it up and all. Oh, totally missing outer zone three. Maybe getting a little bit of it on the back end of it, but definitely not a clean run. All right, so let's go ahead and check this out. A lot of angle giving it to the outside zone one, but Holt almost misses the whole thing. Doesn't feel outside zone two as well as he should be, and three. So another case of, you know, not so much of a high score for the line. And uh, yeah, missing the outside zone one area and the three area. Those are 10 points each for the line. So that's gonna hurt his score very much. All right, waiting for the judges' scores tallied up. Like Robbie said, missing the zones is definitely going to affect him on his first qualify run, but points on the board is what they want to get him by. There you go, 66 for Amagai's first qualify run. Yeah, I mean, I remember the days, you know, Amagai used to be like one of the top contenders you know, qualifying, you know, top 10 all the time and some crazy driving from him. But, you know, recently it's just, it just looks like he's stuck in a bad, you know, I don't know. He's in a rut right yeah. now, yeah. So hopefully he can get that back out, get a better score for his second run. Let's go ahead and move on to the next driver. It's car number 610, K Murakami with Village Up. Driving a JZX100 Mark II. Here he is approaching the outer zone one right there, bringing it through, filling that zone, bringing it back around through outer zone two, not too bad through that zone. Here he is wrapping it back around the second half of the course here, getting his bumper right on the back line right there. And a strong finish. Yeah, so another 
Another uh, clean run by Murakami, but there's a tire dip right for the outside zone one as well, so that's going to be a deduction for him. But other than that, looks like he was able to hover the bumper over the edge of the track, which is what we want to see. But it really depends on, you know, it didn't look like a crazy flow with a lot of, you know, uh, commitment there going into the zone. So it uh, really depends on what the style and the angle judges have to say added to what I have uh, for line. All right, there you are, 80. Murakami get an 80 for his first qualify run. There you go, that's the point leader right here. We got 80 points. It did look like Murakami was very comfortable from yesterday's uh, practice. So uh, seeing how he's gonna do for a second run. Next driver is car number 963, Daichi Mizutani from Mizutani Motorsports and Marusho Racing. Let's see how he's gonna do on his first qualify run, getting the green light coming through the chicane now. All right, here he is approaching that 3-2-1. Little hesitation there, but bringing it back around into this outer zone one, shooting a little bit out of outer zone one. Into this outer zone two, wrapping it back around. Looks like he's stalling just or slowing down just a bit through that outer zone three, adjusting himself. Trying to get his car in the right spot, but maybe sacrificing a little bit too much with fluidity. Yes, and it looks like he's in a wrong gear or maybe wrong rear end size, I'm not sure, but the car doesn't look like it's fooling a lot, but it look, he looks like he is kind of just gliding through the turns. And his, when you hear the car, it sounds like he's dropping the RPM a lot when he's going from outside zone two to three, but he does manage to keep the car sideways and smooth. Let's see what the other judges have to say. Um, and online, I would have to say that was uh, maybe average, a little bit above average on filling the outside zones. And there you are, 72 points for Mizutani. Yeah, it looks like he's lacking an angle, very angle, a very low angle throughout the track. So uh, kind of adds up, but uh, 72. So that's a score on the board. All right, there we are next at the line. Ready to go is number 17, Jin Horino in his Good Ride Sports with Tops Racing Mew S14. I think we saw Horino go into the wall, not hard uh, from yesterday's practice too. So hopefully, He's got everything squared away for this qualify. Yeah, Beast S14, oh, look at a hard oh. angle coming in. I was the one just hanging on right there. Oh! And taking impact right there to the wall. I am glad I moved that sponge barrier over. You yeah, he really <laughs> did make that move literally right before we went yeah, live. Right Robbie before, had yeah. it moved over. And I knew that somebody was going to go into that corner, but I did not want it to be uh, Harino right here. That's going to be an incomplete, obviously. But he was already way offline going into the outside zone one where. Um, uh, both of his rear tires were already off the track um, outside zone one, going into outside zone one, so that's not a good crash. Hopefully, um, you know, the front right isn't as damaged as I think it is going to be, but it uh, looks like he's able to roll off of the track. I, I gotta oh, say, man, though... It looks like his front right's kind of pushed in, too, so... The aggression that he brought out right there, the hard angle that he had at that... What is it? The, the one cone, bringing it into that um, outer zone one was insane and yes like y'all were saying out there that VR power underneath the hood sounds amazing screaming up the strip into that outer zone one but yeah it looks like he may have sacrificed a little bit too much there we'll see what his team's going to do to get his car squared away so he can come back out for his second qualify run there you are hats off to our team out here Setting the track back up, fighting this heat. The sun is beating down. We're a little bit uh, more fortunate being inside the back of this truck right here, getting a little bit of shade, having a little bit of a breeze. Yeah, so not an ideal area to have outside zone one, I would say, where the bridge is, because that's something that you can come, you know, come in really hot and come to an instant stop. Um, I wish we had a, you know, if we can just like make instant walls, I wish we had a wall going all the way across the, you know, with a nice radius where it's not like that, where it's, it's a little bit more dangerous the way it is now. Um, but, you know, we were talking about it today, outside zone three here, I actually want it to be a wall halfway through the uh, outside zone. So hopefully we can make that happen next year. Yeah, I gotta say, it's pretty cool them drifting through outer zone one and then crossing a bridge. 
into that outer zone too. And there's like, it's a good 20 foot drop between that bridge. So it's pretty insane. But I mean, also the backdrop we have here, we're gonna check out the replay again. You can see how hot he was coming in, already dipping two tires right there, and then just getting sucked in right there through the sponges. And yeah, the amount of crashes we saw yesterday, you know, one really bad crash by Mad Mike. You go to his Instagram and see all the pictures. It's on the Formula Jr. Japan uh, Instagram also. Suffered a really bad crash after Outer Zone 4 through the finish. Yeah, I think it was like from, uh, because you know, this track, it's like a horseshoe, like in Atlanta, you're coming up and you got to come back down uh, through this turn and uh, the poor visibility that was there for him, this is his case, uh, when he was coming up and when he was going down, the smoke was still lingering. This car is probably super smoky on the inside, so it was really hard for him to see visually what was on the outside. But you know, he just kept depend, he kept it pinned. Uh, did go into the wall pretty hard, but uh, he's back out, so he will be running qualified today too. But it looks like he has a hurt sh shoulder um, as well. Yeah, here we are pulling up to the line, ready to go. Got the track squared away is number 75, Koji Nagase. He's in the team Kazama with Power Vehicles Lexus IS350C. That's right, convertible top, making it happen. But I got to say, it's got to be blazing having that sun beating down on his helmet and with him having all that gear on also. But we're going to see how he's going to do to perform his first qualified run. Here he is leaving the chicane now. Nagase coming in real hot through the three, two, one right there, bringing it around into this outer zone one. Nice Ooh. job filling that zone through outer zone one, bringing it back into this outer zone two, carrying it through. Let's see how he transitions around into this outer zone three here. Not too bad through that outer zone three. Left a little bit out there through outer zone four. Man, his first two outer zones, I gave him pretty much a perfect uh, score uh, because he did fill the zones the way it's supposed to. I don't know if he, he did it the way he was supposed to style-wise and the angle, but looking at the line, he did make it all the way to the outside. Now, outside zone three, he started to fall apart a little bit, goes in a little early, oh, I'm sorry, late, and comes out a little early, doesn't fill the last outside zone, which the last outside zone even has, you know, it has five points. Uh, total, so you're going to have to see what he's going to get uh, for his total score. Yeah, we'll see here. Beautiful job by Nagase on the first half. We're going to see how much it's going to affect what he did on the second half of that course. And there you are. We're right above outer zone four. 78 for Nagase on his first qualify run. So it looks like the style score was dropped a little bit. Um, the way he was driving it. Let's see if he can fix that for the second uh, qualifying run. All right, next at the line is gonna be number 83, Benjamin Chim in the Team Kazamo with Power Vehicles JZA80 Supra. Another wild driver all the way from Singapore. Exactly, got a powerhouse under that hood. Here he is bringing around the outer zone one. Nice job bringing it through. See the transition back around through this outer zone three here. Nice shot, staying in the zone. Taking a little bit away through that fluidity through that outer zone three, but making it happen with as much flair as he could. Yeah, I would have to say that was sounds like a lot of adjustment. I'm just gonna go off of uh, you know, what I see as a line judge. But he does uh, leave a little on the table. He does feel outside zone one, but he does dip his tires also uh, at the beginning of the outside zone, right before the outside zone. So we're gonna have to give him a deduction for the line on there. but. Uh, he, it sounded like he was, you know, clutching in e-brake, clutching in e-brake and making a lot of adjustments where he went from outside zone two to three. That's a big adjustment that he made. And there you are, 71 for his first qualify run. So if you can make it a little bit smoother, that probably be, that'll be helpful for him uh, to get a higher score for a second run. All right, here we are at the line 33, number uh, Shigahisa Sasayama in the DSL.com Lexus RC 340F spec. All right, so last year, Kazama Auto had an RC. Andrew Gray was driving an RC. Now he's driving the JZX 400. Kazama Auto has an IS uh, now. So this is, now a, this is the only RC in the competition. Exactly, and he debuted it this year. Here he is bringing it around through that outer zone, real deep in that outer zone one. Keeping it deep into the outer zone two, bringing it back around through this outer zone three here. Oh, oh. leaving the zone real early right there. And I gotta say, during practice, he didn't have any struggles throughout this track, so not sure what happened there with the transition from outer zone two to outer zone three. 
You can yeah, see but, how deep uh, he was right there. Yeah, he was really deep, but he was a little bit too deep where he was dipping tires after the outside zone. So that's also going to be a deduction. But leaving, you know, at outside zone three halfway is going to also hurt his score um, as well. Yeah, it's almost like he held on right here too long, waited, and then he got on it. Yeah, he, it was just. He, or yeah, he waited a little too long, didn't get back on throttle as early as he should have, where the car started to correct itself, and that's when he realized and just got back on throttle. So, a little bit of a waste, I think, for a run, but uh, hopefully he can get a better score for a second run. They are 69 for his first qualify run. Okay, so we had a meeting with the drivers this morning talking about when, you know, a lot of the drivers were having a hard time looking at the outside lines, and we will be filling it with uh, chalk during the competition. We're not, we're just not going to do it for every run. When it's really hard to see, we'll go ahead and do it. So we might take a few breaks uh, trying to do that uh, after our first. But till then, we're not taking a break till he's done right here. Royal Okabe and the team because I'm with Power Vehicle JZX100 Mark II. There he is, bringing it around into this outer zone two here. Getting right back on it, swinging it into this outer zone three. Looks like he took a little bit of it, took, took a little bit of time through that transition part into that outer zone three. A land right back into it through the outer zone four. Yeah, it looks like he started off really strong on the outside zone one at line. He does take it all the way to the outside, stays right on the line pretty much, uh, going into the outside zone one, outside zone two. Leaves it a little too early and doesn't fill outside zone three from early on, but fills it afterwards. And right here at outside zone four, it doesn't look like he does a good job, doesn't make it all the way to the wall, uh, but does good, get a pretty good score for his uh, line run, or line, line because of uh, the first outside zone. We'll see how Okabe did here on his first qualify run. There we are, 85. Ooh, we got a new leader on the points right there. It's 85 points by Okabe. 80 was uh, the leading score from Murakami, but uh, he betters that by five points. Next at the line is going to be number 125, Yoshichika Tamagawa, and the Car Guy Racing JZA80 Supra. Go back for the competition. Bring wow. it around real deep. Take it a little bit of angle away through that outer zone one, bringing it back around through the outer zone three what? here. Nice shot through that outer zone three, strong through that outer zone four. Wow, Tamagawa filling the zones pretty good. Wow, I'd have to say a very smooth run by Tamagawa. He does dip a tire at the end of outside zone one, fills outside zone two fairly well, and uh, fills outside zone three very well, leaves it a little early. Uh, but uh, I like the way he started outside zone three from the beginning, very beginning. And uh, I think he did a really, really good job. So I'd have to say I, this is probably the highest uh, line score I'm getting for today. Not perfect. There are a few areas where he did leave early and stuff, but uh, that's an 82. 82 for his first qualify run. It's a very safe score, I would have to say, if you're in the 80s right now from the beginning. Yeah, lower 70s looks like it's not the safe zone, but next up at the line is going to be number 38, Tadahiro Fukada. Been here from since day one. He's in the Tanabe SSR Team Dumlot JZX100 Mark II. So we, you know, also call him the gentle giant, really nice guy, funny guy, but you know, helmets on, ready to go. Here he is screaming through into this 3-2-1, bringing it back around through the outer wow. zone one. Nice job filling that zone. See how he gets back on it here through outer zone three. Looks like a little maybe hesitation to the start of that outer zone three but able to get in that zone and fill it. Well, I have to say, you know, um, line-wise, Gata did a pretty good job, very smooth. And uh, the way he usually drives is very gentle as well. He's very smooth, 
Um, I'm not going to say he's not he's not the most exciting driving driver out there, but when he lays down a run where it's like this, keeps the car on the line on the outside zones and keeps it very neat and subtle. So like a very you know gentle gentleman, uh, I think that was a pretty good run. Now it really depends on what he's going to get for his um, style and uh, uh, his uh, angle. We'll but I would have to say. His angle is not as deep as some of these drivers, so he might be docked from that too. I'm just uh, making assumptions, but yeah, see? There you go, 76 for his first qualifier run. Yeah, so I would have to say uh, line-wise, very tight, but style-wise, not very, yeah, it's a lot of moving around and, um, how am I gonna say it? Not a lot of commitment either. But I think that's just the way he drives all the time, but hopefully that 76 is gonna be good enough He's gonna have a second run. Now let's go on and get to the next driver. It's car number 770, Yoshitatsu Kaneda driving the Cusco Racing GR86. Look at that, coming in like a rocket through the 3-2-1, bringing it into this outer zone one right there. Nice job, look at the aggression, wrapping it around into this outer zone two. Taking a little bit real deep, trying to adjust himself, find himself, and seat himself in that outer zone three, but that was probably the biggest struggle. It was very nice and aggressive through outer zones one and two, but it looks like he struggled throughout that outer zone three. Yeah, it looked like he was dipping a tire all the time. I'm gonna have to check out the replay, but dipping a tire at the entry at outside zone one, not gonna be a perfect score there, but very good, aggressive leaving a little bit of space at outside zone two. Then right here, outside zone three, he does fill the zone from early, but he is one tire off uh, half of the way. So I'm gonna have to give him a deduction for that as well. But a uh, very good job and clean run by uh, Kaneda. I gotta say, I'm very impressed because from practice till now, I mean, and much of the season, looks like he's been struggling. So he kind of had a good run up until that outer zone three. We're gonna see what his first qualifier run is gonna where it's gonna place him in the point standing for first qualify runs. Yeah, so these are the Cusco girls waving at you. Wave back, guys, if you like them. There you go. 85. Just like that. He He's is tied. tied. Yeah, he is tied with Ogabe's 85. And they're excited for him. Nice job by did you Pineda. See, did you see the excitement that he had in that drive? Uh, that, that run he had, he got a 36 for style. That means he did something that uh, made uh, Sean Adriano feel really good. Next at the line, coming all the way from China, number 35, Sha Chang Hao in his Ling Long tire drift, Team Orange Asia R35 GTR. Yes, Natsu driving this R35. Um, you know, we talked to him after the driver's meeting and stuff too. He's very, you know, he's new in FD Japan and he's trying to learn it. He is, you know, coming from far away, and uh, yeah, he's trying his best to get in it. He has a car. I think he was fourth place a few rounds ago as well, so he's capable of making it up that ladder too. Yeah, and he hosts so. his own drift class in China too, so he does his own drift sessions out there, so he's very exp experienced behind the wheel. We're gonna see how he does here on this technical track that we have out here in Oku Luke. Here he is coming in real hot through that three, two, one, trying to carry that motor in a hard angle through that outer zone one, bringing it back around through this outer zone two, Getting right back on it, transitioning around in this outer zone three, right on the edge right there, hanging on, look at that. Kicking out some smokes, looks like he got a little stalled up there, but able to get through and finish through that outer zone four. Yeah, he flicked the car really hard from two to three, but he had to, uh, it was almost a stall because of the wheels, uh, the wheel spin he did. I like the way he took outside zone one because he did feel it pretty good. Uh, didn't have to dip a tire before that either, so. Uh, not bad, um, the outside zone one. Could have been a little deeper on outside zone two, but um, leaving outside zone three a little early could probably hurt his line score. But I would have to say, uh, probably an above average run for him for the line, uh, for line-wise here. And right there, he does leave outside zone, he starts to leave outside zone three a little early, uh, which has to make a deduction there. But you know, overall, let's see what the other judges have to say. There you are, 77 for his first qualify run. I gotta say, so Robbie made a post yesterday during practices about the angle that they were coming into outer zone one. And I feel like some of these drivers took a view at that and was like, okay, that makes yeah, good like, sense right there. Yeah, like it's a big difference. Like go, I mean, not to say go and look at my page, but go and check out my Instagram uh, reel I made yesterday. I was sitting at the start line, or I'm sorry, initiation area and just filming and trying to 
you know, compare that. So you can see the big difference in some of the cars. Let's we'll see the big difference here by Katsuhiro Meguro in this Eisen Origin Labo JZX100 Mark II. Here he is bringing around into this outer zone. One there, nice shot filling that zone, getting right back on it. You can hear him scream it through into this outer zone three here. Leave it a little bit early right there through that outer zone three, but able to make it through into the outer zone four with a strong finish. And man, the smoke trail that he laid out on the track. Yeah, that was a lot of aggression, and uh, he's trying. Looks like he's Meguro's trying to make a statement. But yes, you said there are a few areas where he did leave outside zones um, slightly early. Doesn't fill outside zone two as deep as we want him to. Uh, doesn't go into outside zone three as early and leaves a little bit early, but. Um, does fill the zones fairly well, so I'd have to say a little above average on the line. Let's see if uh, his aggression was able to be, see if that was appealing to the style and the angle judges. Yeah, you could definitely hear the throttle control that he had from outer zones one to outer zone two. It looked, sounded like he was really mad. I don't know if he didn't like his approach, but there you are, 79 for his first qualified run. Yeah, so let's see where the borderline and the bubble is going to be because we're almost halfway through the uh, qualifying we have today. All right, here we are next at the line, number 30, Takumi Sato. It was his birthday, what, birthday, two days ago? Uh, yesterday or day before? Happy birthday to you. Probably so likes karaoke, birthday. so he's good at this. Yes, I love singing. <laughs> but uh, besides that, let's see if he likes to drive this track and see if he likes this track here. Yep, and his team Kazama with power vehicles, JZX100 Chaser, bringing it into that 3 2 1, into that outer zone 1, real shallow through that zone. He needs to get back into it, get into the zones, fill them, and here he is bringing it into this outer zone 3. Missing the first half, but able to fill the second half there. Nice job riding that wall, just giving it a little bit of a love tap at the end. Yeah, but his first outside zone does not look like it's going to be a good score there because of um, him leaving the outside zone, not actually making it all the way through. He's probably halfway in it through the whole thing. Uh, but... Yeah, it's not going to be, that's not looking too good for Sato, the birthday boy here, because, you know, he didn't go as deep as he should have on outside zone one. So let's go ahead and see what he uh, he has. Yeah, he, as you can see from the drone's view, you know, it doesn't feel outside zone two as well, too. Goes in outside zone three a little late, so not so high on the line, but we'll see how uh, the other judges have uh, scored in. There you go, 77. Seven, seven, um, you know, no freebies even if it's your birthday. Exactly, and yeah. it's getting a little nerve-wracking with the points right now. 77 may be safe right now, but that's we're only halfway through. We still got a good 24 drivers oh, left. we're halfway there. Almost. Sorry, guys. You, you brought up karaoke, now I'm on fire. Now he's all about it. <laughs> We were actually talking about that last night. When everybody leaves the track, we should just play it on the PA system and, and do karaoke night. Yeah, this place well, Robbie, gets, that is, not this me. place gets really quiet um, at night when all the teams are gone because we do stay in the lodge up here. And uh, it's a very different experiment, experience that we have other than, you know, being in Did hotel. Did you say experiment? Experience. What you got going on up there? Yeah, I'm trying to put things in uh, Kenny's mouth while he's sleeping. <laughs> like... Food. Robbie's just jealous, so usually we room together. This time we're not. Sean's in my yeah, room. Man, I gotta Sean, listen to him Sean snore. Sean's my sleeping buddy. I know, we sleep in different bed, beds, guys. Like, now, this is going the wrong direction, so let's change the subject. We got time, though. Like we said, they're chalking out the course for us right now, so these drivers can see we're halfway through. 44 drivers right now, we're halfway through. Um, but yeah, we got we got enough time. But yeah, no, it's nice out here. Beautiful scenery. We checked out the river during practice yesterday that they got going through here. Water is freezing for sure. Yeah, that was like a quite of a like a bromance, bromance moment that we had out there at the river and stuff. But uh, it's a very nice. Uh, hey, Robbie made here. Robbie made some funny reels off of it, so I'll give him that. Yeah. He's starting to learn. I know he's old and all. Y'all probably don't know that, but he's pretty old. He's trying to learn technology, trying to get this whole real thing down. Yeah, and all y'all out there, this man's working off a phone that's probably like five years old. You know how it goes. After two years, you need a new phone. So, you know. I think like Atari. <laughs> you guys probably don't even know what Atari is. Oh, yeah, you should. 
Yeah, but uh, there is a big uh, age gap here because, you know, Sean's like 30. Um, Kenny's like, what? 37. 30, yeah, 37. I'm 45. You can see it's like a lot of gray hair. Yeah, I know. My son is closer in age with Sean than I am, so. Or uh, I'm closer yeah, yeah, than, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. We know what you're talking about. Yes, for those of you asking out there, it's a brisk 87 degrees out. It's humid, though. If you have been in Japan in the summertime, it is humid out here. Looks like the next car is pulling up. The track workers are running off the track right now, trying to clear it for them. But right there, you got them ready to go in the Lexus IS number 80, Yuta Komatsu in the Komatsu Racing Lexus. Beautiful looking car, but he did sustain some damage there. Yeah, you know what? Looking at the damage, it doesn't even look like he hit anything because he hit the driver's side, which is the right side of the car. Or looking at the car on the left side, because, you know, right-hand drive. But he went into the wall and hit the corner of it. Uh, but maybe it's under the panels there that we see, but it doesn't look like he has much damage, so uh, that's a good thing. Let's see uh, him lay down a cool run for, exactly. uh, for the first one. Here he is coming around the 3 2 1 right there, bringing it around through the outer zone one. Nice job filling that zone, getting right back on it through the outer zone two here, swinging it back. Looks like he's getting more and more aggressive throughout this season, and that's what I like to see. But is it too late for him right now? Halfway through the pack right now throughout the season. Round wow. five, we'll see how he does. He fills his own pretty good as a line judge, I'm going to have to say. Uh, I'm going to have to go over, you know, he does dip a tire before he gets into the outside zone one, so I'm going to have to give him a deduction on line right there, but, um, and leaves a little bit early. Outside zone two, does a good job, a little bit spaced. Outside zone three, fills it fairly well. And yeah, outside zone four, he's right on the line, on right on the outside, so I would have to say, Getting better to uh, throughout the run and gets really good at the end. So, uh, fairly good job. There you go, the replay, the drone footage, chasing him down. But like Robbie said, filling the zones beautifully. We'll see if it's enough. The Canole Oil Girls cheering him on. There you are, 82 for Komatsu. 82 points. Pretty good run. Um, I would have to say being in the 80s uh, is going to be safe. But, you know, some of these drivers, they get carried away on trying to fill the lines and then they forget about the style part of it where they have to look dynamic and, you know, looks like they're throwing the car around. I think he might have took it a little safe. But uh, since he's sitting on an 82, it's good enough to go into the second run. Hopefully he can do a better job for a second run. But till then, the first run right here for this next driver, number 870, Akihino Hanawa in the T-square with good ride, DGR Eternal Speedmaster Z4. So the only Z4 that is uh, competing in a competition in Japan here, even with the VQ in it, very exactly. interesting setup. BMW chassis, Nissan engine. Here he is bringing it back around into this outer zone three. Dipping a tire right there, but able to get right back on it, stay in that zone. Very strong right there throughout the track. Yeah, so a few points, dipping a tire at outside zone one before the uh, initiation or at the initiation area, not filling outside zone two as full. Um, and like you said, dipping a tire at outside zone three and actually not getting as close on to the wall uh, at the outside zone four. So um, that was maybe an average line run, I would I would have to say, or line score. It really depends. Uh, looks like everything else, you know, angle-wise, and uh, looks like uh, the driver was very aggressive here. So uh, eager to see what he's going to get for his first run. Exactly. So that's Hanawa, but his, I guess, team owner right now is Takaki, and yeah, he was driving was, uh, last he was year. Yeah, competitor, yeah. Exactly. There you are, 75. He debuted this last year at Fuji. But now he has a new driver driving it. And, you know, go check out his Facebook, see how the build went. Because, yes, he does have a VQ under that hood. Yes, he does. All right, looking at the next, that's another BMW in the line. And this is probably the only uh, other BMW F22 that I see in a competition in Japan. Exactly, and this thing is V8 powered. It's Yukio Matsui in the ocean with M2 Evolution F22 BMW. Here he is, you can hear this V8 coming around into this outer zone one. Let's see him get right back on it here through this outer zone two. Bringing it back around, doing justice into this outer zone three. A little bit late in that outer zone three, but trying to make it up here through this outter zone four. Ooh, I'd have to say, 
not filling the zones. And you I had mean, a, a little short. Yeah, you had a conversation area. with him before we started, we, before we went on live about how he was doing. Yeah, right there you see there's some room going to the outside zone too. Does the transition a little too early, doesn't go into the deep area of outside zone three. Kind of gets into outside zone three halfway through. Um, and right here, outside zone one as well. You dip a tire, but he leaves early. Doesn't fill the zone as much as he was supposed to. So line-wise, not so good, uh, but very aggressive looking run. So see what the other drivers have to say uh, for the other parts of the score. There you are, 76 for his first qualify run. Yeah, he has a lot of room to grow here, so hopefully he could figure out what he did on his first run and bring him back something strong for the second. All right, next at the line is going to be number five. Number six. Or number 666, six, 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 Shui Shimano in the Vitor Racing with Chadi Boy style. Sorry, One guys, via. Uh, secret. Kenny can't read numbers. <laughs> I was lost on the, the, here he is coming in through the chicane now. Let's see how he's going to do here. This track is built for him. He did a phenomenal job the year prior. Here he is bringing around into outer zone one. Getting right back into this outer zone two here. Nice job filling that zone. Let's see how he does here. Manipulating his car. Look at that. You can see him kicking up dust wow. right in that back edge of outer zone three and outer zone four. Wow. I, I, am, I am not going to give him a perfect line score because I have to watch outside zone one again because he does dip tires going to the outside zone one right here there you go That's two tires off he does fill the zone but uh, i'm gonna have to give him a deduction for that but even with that deduction everything else is pretty much perfect outside zone two outside zone three looks like he did a good job outside zone four he gets the car to where it's at now pace wise is it the most exciting run i don't know it looks like he's having the he's making the car loose for it to be easy to get to the outside zone now, is it going to be edgy, like what the judges want to see, and is it going to have a lot of angle score there, too? So, very eager to see what he's going to get for his first run. All right, here's another. Let's see what the judges have for him. There you are, 87. New points leader. He still has a lot of room, too. He still has some angle and style scores to pick up. If he can make it around outside zone one without dipping those tires before the outside zone one, man, I would have gave him a, a perfect line score. All right, here we are. Next at the line is number five, Tomoki Tanaka in the V-style good ride with Tetsujin JZX100. Yeah, and you know, this doesn't like, we're not looking at speed. Speedy would be nice, but we're not looking at the speed where uh, he kept it floating. He drove the car the way he can uh, with the amount of power and everything. Took the car where it needs to be at and he gets an 87. So good job to uh, Mono. Yeah, I definitely like the transition from outer zone two to outer zone three. He filled that full three zone, but let's see how this driver is going to do here. Bringing in the outer zone one, leaving a little bit early right there on the inside edge on both outer zones one and two, but the bumper is in that zone, filling that zone. And there he is right on the back side of that outer zone three here. That first outer zone wasn't the cleanest. No, line-wise, he does uh, make it around, but I think he kicks a little bit too much angle, loses heat, and uh, he does have to make a huge adjustment going from outside zone uh, one to two. So he, he, he kind of pushed through and made it work, uh, but is that the cleanest run that Tanaka can do? I know uh, this man is a very exciting driver, uh, leaving the outside zone one, as you can see on the on the on the uh, drone view, and you know not filling outside zone two as well. But here you are with uh, his run. So let's see how else he will get. 78, 78 for Tanaka's first qualify run. Kind of in that middle zone, middle middle of the pack right now with yeah. the points. But next at the line, Ooh. close the door, ready to go. Number 61, Mao Yamanaka in the Good Ride Motorsports A90 Good Ride Supra. Yeah, I was watching this driver, this young driver, kicks a lot of angle at the entry to outside zone one, makes it look very exciting. So let's see if he's able to pull that off. Um, him and his teammate, Hibino, yeah, Hibino, going down some crazy angle. Um, very exciting to see. So.
So looking forward to this. Yeah, definitely. He has Hibino on his side to learn from the best. And here he is right here. Mao coming around into that outer zone one. Look at that hard angle. Complete 90 through that zone in that outer zone one to this outer zone two. You're filling outer zone two beautifully. Swinging it back around. Just missing the first half and riding the inside edge right there of his back tire. Yeah, outside zone three, not so much. Uh, but outside zone one, line-wise, he does make the car go. But it looks like he leaves a little bit early, too. Yeah, I got to say, but he left it on the track from that 3-2-1 cone, which a lot of drivers are struggling on. But like Robbie said right there, not clean at all. Has left a lot of points on the board through that outer zone three. Yeah, so he does good. And, you know, this is where to, I'm going to break this down to you guys, too, because what I gave him here is probably a five for all three zones except the first one. I gave him an eight for the first zone because he does fill it fairly well. So that kind of shows you that he did every, he did good at the five zones but he didn't get at one he didn't do good at one 10 zone and got only half of the score there and lost two at the beginning so i mean if he would have filled those zones a little bit better he'd get a, a lot of a higher score than that there you go 82 for yamanaka's first qualify run he's got numbers on the board here so that's going to be good for him he, he has been you know uh, getting knocked out because of you know, technical issues on his vehicle. So hopefully he can run uh, all the way through with no, no, no issues. And speaking of vehicles, this is a new vehicle for this driver right here. It's number 37, Koichi Yamashita, the two-time champ in the TMS Racing Team Silent Tire BMW E92. He used to be in the JZX100, but he still has that 2J platform under the hood. And here he is, like a rocket, coming into this 3-2-1, outer zone one right there, getting back on it right here through outer zone two, right on the inside edge of it. Could have been a little bit deeper through that zone and just adjusting himself. And you saw a little bit of adjustment early on through that outer zone three. But just like all the other drivers, finishing strong through that outer zone four. Yeah, line-wise, uh, looks like he does leave the zone kind of early. Right here, doesn't fill the outside zone one as well as he should be in outside zone two, a little far away from the outside line. Kind of makes his way into the outside zone three, but still... Looks like he has a lot of room there. And uh, I would have to say, I know he can do more than that. And I'm not scoring him according to that. I'm scoring to, according to what I see. But it looks like he doesn't fill the zones as well as he should be. And it uh, looks like uh, he's in a rush to get through the track. Hopefully, he can make the car, put the place, place the car to where it should be, uh, where the zones are. Or be very deep in the outside zones. And there you go, 80 for his first qualify run. Yamashita getting an 80. Yeah, so running very deep in these outside zones are very, very important. And uh, hopefully this young gentleman can do that as well. At the line now is number 212, Yutaro Oe in the Awa Tire Racing RX-7 FD3S. Last year he had an S15 he was driving. This was actually piloted by his dad. He took over this year. He's been doing a phenomenal job. He's a little bit more than halfway in the pack right now. I think he's like top uh, top 20, but here he is bringing it into this 3-2-1 to outer zone one. Oh, real deep in that zone, riding that back edge of that tire right there on that zone, into that outer zone two, swinging it back around, missing the first half of that outer zone three or that first portion of outer zone three, but getting it right back on it and on the inside edge of outer zone four. All right, I like the way he approached outside zone one. I do have to give him a deduction because of you know the tire dipping before the zone. Uh, but outside zone, this is where it's the waste. Outside zone two and outside zone four, he leaves a lot of space there. Like, look at, he leaves a lot of space there and that's gonna be like a two, three point deduction. It's kind of a waste because I would say, you know, outside zone one and outside zone three may be the most hardest areas. And outside zone two, as you can see, he didn't fill it as much as he was supposed to. Does a good job towards more of the later half of the outside zone uh, three as well. Yeah, the biggest thing is being real deep in those zones, it makes a huge difference. There you go, 77 for his first qualify run for Oe. But Robbie made a, a huge, you know, not finding, but we measured out the course last year here at Okuyuki for the FDJ2, FDJ3 guys. And being just one car length inside, it took away like, what is it? A five car lengths. 
yeah, length. Like from the full like track size. Width, like two meters in, if you rode the same track on this short track that we had for FDJ23, we measured it out and it's f about five car length shorter. shorter. That's how much you're cheating the line. It's a lot. Well, let's see this driver here, number 58, Kazuhiro Kubo in the vacant seas. 180SX bringing it around into that outer zone one. Nice job filling that zone. Looked like he hovered on that line on the back half. Couldn't quite get into that outer zone two early on, but able to get into that outer zone three right there all the way through, sweeping it around into this outer zone four here. And once again, outside zone two and outside zone four, it's a waste. He's losing almost total of five points just in those two areas. Now that's a tire dip there. Fills the outside zone one very well but I do have to include the deduction for the tire uh, drop. But he does get really deep on the outside zone three area. I think that was a pretty good job by uh, Kubo. You saw right there, outer zone two missing a huge chunk of it, able to get all the way through outer zone three. But yeah, once again, right there, taking away first from yeah. some angle and missing that outer zone. Man, four. outer zone, man, just. There you go, 78. Just imagine if outer zone three, half of it was the wall, that'd be a total. Oh, yeah. So I really hope that we can make that happen next uh, year. So next at the line, putting in his first qualify run, it's going to be number three, Takatoshi Mamaida in the 5X tire navigate S14. Drone set, ready to chase this car down as soon as he gets the good green light to go. We'll see. We saw the him earlier. Is coming soon. Yep. We saw him earlier on during practice getting some uh, kakigori. So we'll see if this made him, you know, woke him up and everything. Yeah, some nice shaved ice that we they have at the vendors here. Which, if you're in the area, come check us out. They got vendors out here. They got FMX. But here we are right here. Ima Maida approaching the 3 2 1, bringing it back around into this outer zone one. Whoa. Not too bad. Getting the tire right in that zone, bringing it back around. Look at that aggression through wow. outer zone two. Nice job. You can hear his engine scream through. Wow. Nice job. Dipping the tire right at the end of outer zone three, but real deep in that zone. Man, look like a madman out there. Yeah, um, he does do. He does do a really good job on the outside zones because he does fill the zones the way he needs to. He does miss a little bit of outside zone two. Outside zone three, almost pretty much perfect. Outside zone four, kind of doesn't fill it as much as he should. Those are the areas where he's going to be losing the scores. But uh, very, very good job on the outside zones line-wise. And there's a lot of aggression there. So uh, this driver, you know, he is one to look out for because he is a pretty aggressive driver uh, during tandem as well. All right, here it is. First qualify run, 79 for Imamaida. Go 79. Let's see if that's going to be good enough, actually, to put him to, because, you know, we don't know what's going on. For, you know, the overall the points, yeah, yeah, exactly. But next at the line, coming all the way from Thailand, you got number 56, Ming Ming, with Mr. DIY Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange, and yeah, his so S15. He's a champ. He's a young, I think, 18 years old. Maybe 18, 19. Uh, champion from uh, Thailand. He won a championship over there. Yeah, so the 2022 Drift Champion from Thailand. Here he is coming around. And he suffered a pretty bad wreck in outer zone four yesterday early on in practice. Took out his rear end. You can see how the Team Orange Ling Long Tire Drift team made it happen. His car's clean, squared away, and he's making it happen out there. Look at that, deep in that outer zone four. And yeah, that took away a huge chunk of his time practicing yesterday when he made that collision with the wall. Yeah, I would have to say probably not one of the smoothest runs, but he does build the back half, the later half of the uh, zone on this track. Doesn't build the outside zone one as deep as he should, but right here, outside zone three, he does uh, get really deep into the zone and outside zone four, and a very good job on the line side of it. but. It looks like he was making a lot of adjustments going through outside zone one as yeah, well. Yeah, a little so, wavering there. Yeah, th let, let's see what the uh, the style score. There you go, DIY. Is going to. Uh, yeah, 
So all right, here we are, right. seventy-eight for Ming Ming. Seventy-eight. So there's a few areas for him to clean up that run, but for the first run, he has a seventy-eight. All right, here we are next at the line. He qualified first and he took first overall in podium here. It's number 530, Wataru Masuyama in the Good Ride Motorsports GR Yaris. Yeah, he was just at the FD Seattle event uh, where I was at, you know, last weekend. He was supporting his uh, sponsors and supporters by now Japan. Exactly, and here he is in the 3-2-1, taking off from FDUS. Look at that, real deep in that zone, making a little bit of a correction, but coming into that outer zone too here, bringing it back around the table right there. But we I talked to him yesterday, and he says, yeah, he's just been struggling this year. He, he blew his engine, put a new engine. He's feeling like there's a little bit of a power difference that he's having, and look at that right there. You can see him dip two tires through that outer zone one. Yeah, he gets a little too deep on the outside zone one, halfway through uh, outside zone three, and a little bit of uh, space at outside zone four. But yeah, compared to his 97 point run from last year, I'm not gonna say this is gonna be anywhere near that. But yeah, he's out here this year fully dedicating himself to his Japan program. Not sure if he'll be back in the U.S. next year. He didn't say he's fully done with U.S. He's just trying to focus oh, yeah, on no, his no, program he, out he here. Wants to. He's uh, figuring out when he can make it back. There we are, 81. All right, so we do have our guys filling in the outside zones. We're probably one fourth away from. Uh, we're we're on the top. We're 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 down to the top twelve. Top twelve. Let's see how they're gonna do. Trying to get these zones filled out. So yeah, this is one of the things that the drivers asked for. They said halfway through qualify and uh, much of the runs they lose focus on where the track is because we set the cones back one meter back. Yeah, because that it, that happened too. We would like to put it right on the line, but a lot of drivers. Uh, you know, we had meetings where a lot of drivers would hit it during our practice. We had to fix it and it takes too much time during their practice time and also damages the car. So uh, we came to a conclusion where we're just going to sit the, the cones back and the driver's going to have to go off of that knowing how far it's about two meters away uh, from the outside line. See, so look at, as you can see, outside zone two right there. He's about to put down the chalk, but look at the outside zone two line. Nobody ran over it because a lot of people are missing outside zone two. Oh yeah, that back line right there. Yeah, we see some cars hovering over it with their bumper, uh, but nobody going over that outside line because they're not as deep as they think they are. And being deep at outside zone two probably helps out going and flinging back and getting deep into outside zone three as well. So something, uh, something to look into. Yeah, I feel like they're holding back because it is very intimidating transitioning because you have the start of the wall right there through outer zone three. But like you said, we'd love oh, yeah. to see I a mean, wall right all the way I around. I mean, more than intimidating, it's probably hard because you're looking at the wall until you kind of start to clear the bridge. Then you finally get to the outside zone too. So you're almost like blindfolded up until, true. you know, blindfolded to where to go. Well, speaking of being blindfolded. <laughs> I was just going to say that. He was blindfolded yesterday, suffered an accident. You'll see the back end of the car, but man, his team yeah, at TCP to Magic team, yep. made it happen. They spent all night, like I said, go check out his news feed because it shows the timeline line of everything of uh, how they fixed it. Yeah, then I heard that uh, he has hurt his left shoulder. So he may not be able to use the e-brake as much. And here it is right here, Mad Mike with Dent coming into that outer zone one right here, filling that wow. zone right there, bring it, getting right back on it through this outer zone two. Nice job, and you can hear him screaming around through that outer zone two into this outer zone three here. Wow. And like nothing happened right there. Car is running beautifully and he's making it happen, ripping through, giving a show for the spectators out wow. here. So outside zone three was perfect. And as I was trying to look at the tires walk up, it is true, it looks like he cannot use his e-brake, but he is managing. He was talking about doing the brake bias where it's on the rear more when he needs the brakes, he's gonna use his foot brakes. But other than that, he's not really gonna be on his brakes. Good job from Mike, uh, Mad Mike with that uh, line-wise because uh, outside zone three was pretty much perfect. He had a little bit of space 
at the you know towards the end of outside zone one and two but uh everything else was pretty much uh very very a lot of skills right there so exactly. great job by uh that's Mad crazy Mike. they they went back to their 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 shop got the car squared away the whole rear just needed to be completely fixed and there you go 85 for his first qualify run wow 85 with the handicap with no not using it. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's pretty, pretty good. good that's very impressive especially coming uphill like they've been doing from the start line to outer zone one but next up at the line we're going to see how this team Cusco racing car is going to do number 77 Yusuke Kusaba in this GR86 yeah he's uh, pretty far from being in the championship race but he does still have He's within 100 points from the, the number one uh, uh, spot right now. So let's see how far he can make it up here and see how uh, he's going to tackle this fall by run. Here he is coming into that outer zone one. Nice shot filling that zone, bringing it back around deep into the outer zone two here, transitioning through outer zone three, trying to get in early on, riding that back edge, picking up all that chalk right there. Not bad by Kusaba. Yes, very clean run by Kusaba. Just a few points I'm going to point out for the line. Dipping the tire uh, at outside zone one. Good job at outside zone two. Then not filling it from the beginning of outside zone three. That's another point that he's losing. And outside zone four, he has a little bit of space that he has uh, towards the wall. Uh, towards the end, but uh, watching everything else, it looks like a pretty exciting run uh, by this young driver. See what he's going to get as a total. Yeah, Kusava's definitely been picking up throughout the season. We're going to see right here, 82 for his first qualify run. 82 for Kusava. So let's see. Uh, let's see how uh, he could better his second run after watching this first run. Exactly, but till then he has teammates up right now. I mean, Hopefully. being in the 80s, that's like safe zone, so. True. Hopefully the spotter is in his ear saying Kusaba got an 82, but this is another Cusco Racing car here, number 774, Hokuto Matsuyama in his A90 Supra. All right, here he is bringing it around through the 3 2 1 into this outer zone one. Hokuto Matsuyama right now, he got third last year here at Okuibuki, so he's going to see how he's going to do. Finishing off right here through outer zone four. Very interesting approach. He does fill the zone, but uh, same as the other drivers, he does dip a tire at the beginning of the outside zone one. And outside zone two fills it perfectly, but outside zone three gets in a little late, then doesn't fill it all the way to the edge. Yeah, this is last year's series champ. He's currently sitting 10th overall in points. So he's still in the reach for the championship this year. Less than 100 points away from the top leader right now. But yeah, this is not the cleanest run that we've seen from Matsuyama. They're hoping for the best score, the Cusco Racing Girls. Let's see what the judges are going to give Matsuyama here for his first qualify run. Yeah, there's a lot of room he left uh, for the outside zones. That's a lot of points on the table. There you go, 86. So he made it up by getting a better score for the style um, and uh, and a lot of angle carried through the, uh, the track. Yeah, he's sitting second overall in points, but we still have a lot of driving ahead. We still got nine drivers to qualify their first qualify run, and then we're gonna be starting back from the top with 44 drivers. And here we are right here. Next up at the line is number 57, Kanta in the Ling Long Tire Drift, Team Orange JZX100 Chaser. Yeah, so the aggressive flick for the outside zone one, the aggressive flick going to the outside zone three, very important. A good flow that you need uh, to get a score. Let's see if Kanta can pull that off. And Kanta coming in real hot into this outer zone one, getting into wow. that zone. Nice job filling that zone, bringing it back around through this outer zone wow. two, filling outer zone two. And this right here, picture wow. perfect, right back around, wow. right back in it, riding that back line, tire right on the line, and wow. right there, riding the wall. Hey, you guys want to talk about a perfect line score? I think you saw it because I'm just going to have to double check to see if he was on the line at the outside zone. I could see the tire mark right on the outside. 
that might be a one tire barely off at the outside zone three, but man, deep into the zone and a lot of throttle. Yeah, it looks like he's off. Oh man, but still, that's still gonna be a pretty high score for him. And I gotta say, I love the aggression all the way from the start to the finish, full throttle, smoke trail all the way around. He barely lets off right there, getting right back on it. Uh, Tapping the wall there, and then and now it's tapping right here. He taps that outer zone four wall. We'll see it, how, how he's going to do. Man, that's the only, I had to get him, I had to do a point deduction outside zone three, and it was a very long time he was off uh, one tire. So um, if it was just a little bit, I would have been like a point off or something like that, but he pretty much started. Oh, first oh, 90 points there right go. there, 91 for Kanta. First driver to be in the knew, 90s. We already knew it was going to be a good score, and it was a good score. It's a 91 by Kanta. It's a young driver. I think he's like 22 or 23 or something, but showing everybody else what he's got. So interesting to see. He impresses every single time, but let's see this next driver. He finished fourth here at Okuyuki last year. See how he's going to do on his first qualify run. Number 555, Yukio Fausto in the Side X Japan with Cylon Tire and Liberty Walk S15. This man is capable of laying down a crazy run. And I know it. We've seen it. Let's see if he can do that this time for the qualify. Exactly. Very aggressive looking car. And here he is throwing some angle coming into outer zone one right there. Right on the back edge. Just hanging on. Getting right back on it into this outer zone two. And you can hear him ripping through the outer zone three here. Nice shot. Filling that zone. Strong finish by Yukio Fausto right there. Woo! Anti-lag just screaming at the crowd right there. Yeah, so two tires off at the entry and a tire towards the end. Doesn't, even with the long bumper, doesn't fill the outside zone, almost gets the tire after the outside zone two. Now I'd have to say going in late at outside zone three um, and he fills the, fills the zone, but uh, pretty much pretty good in the line score, but looks like he did a little bit too much at some areas as well. Yeah, he definitely makes it sound like an aggressive run, the way he stays on the throttle and stays committed. But we're going to see what the rest of the judges have for him. 86. So 86 is solid. Possibly right now tied for third overall in the qualify point standing. So this second time around is definitely going to be something he's got to fix. Hopefully he's going to tune into this and see what he needs to fix on his zones being where he's at. But here we are next at the line coming all the way from the West Coast in California. Number 21, Ken Gushi and the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles Lexus IS500. Brand new car. Brand new car to the market, put it that way. But brand new well, build, brand new car. Five. <laughs> still, brand new car. Yeah, it's still market, yeah. beautiful car right you here. You can go beautifully to the built. dealership and pick one up for yourself, too. But nothing so. like this, because everything on it is pretty much carbon. Exactly, and then you have to 2 it. No, but, uh, uh, you know, coming off of a podium, you know, that is probably a booster for uh, Kanguchi, you know, uh, to be driving harder for this round. Exactly, got third at Sugo. Here he is bringing it around into this outer zone one right there, filling that zone, getting right back on it, screaming into this outer zone two. Nice shot through the outer zone two. Wrapping it back around through outer zone three, a little later in that entry to outer zone three, but getting right back on it, committing himself to that outer zone four. See, like so what I think about uh, Ken's run is, he did dip uh, a few tires at the beginning of the outside zone right here. As you can see, that's probably two tires going into the outside zone. That's going to be deduction. But at the same time, he doesn't he doesn't um, waste any other points because he is very tight on the lines, the outside zones. And, uh, yeah, he's going to get a pretty good score for the line. Now being on throttle and the excitement and the angle and all that stuff uh, will be up to the other judges. But we'll see what his uh, total score is going to be. Here's that chase by the drone, bringing it back around. Nice little clip right there against the wall on his wing through outer zone four. There we are, 87. Tied for second in points right now. And that's just a little taste of what Kengushi's gonna do next on his second qualifier run. 
Here we are. We are down to the last six drivers for the first round to qualify. Next up at the line is number 111, Tetsuya Hibino in the Good Ride Motorsports with the Good Ride RZ34, 400Z right here. Right now, Hibino is tied with Naoto Suenaga right now. They're sitting in fifth and sixth place right now in the overall point right. standings. If Hibino does the run like he does at practice, Guys, watch this. And here he is right here. Hard flick right here through the 3-2-1 right there. A little shallow in the outer zone one, but man, what a hard flick. You can see his tires right there. Correction, full angle right there, bringing it back around through that outer zone three here. And like Robbie said, if you focus in on his front tires, he literally bends that thing completely 90. Yeah, so his the initiation was a very hard throw. It was very awesome. But I think uh, the line-wise, it didn't come out the way he probably wanted it to. He left outside zone one a little too early and uh, doesn't look like a complete run that he was able to put together like he did at practice. Uh, missing the outside zone two and three. Um, so kind of a sloppy start for him. And uh, I'm gonna have to give him a lot of deductions for the line um, overall. But man, the angle kit on that car, that complete 90 for him. He's taking insane angle and he's maxing it out. And that's what Robbie and I like to see. Maxing it out, making it happen and maxing giving a show. Maxing out everything. It's exactly. just like saying, hey, it's like if I have $10, I'm going to spend $11. That's kind of, that's that's what we like to see. You know, you don't want to see a driver say, hey, you know, I got 10 bucks. Let me spend three. You know, it's not going to be as exciting. There you go. 84. So look at the style score. That was a lot of style just on the wrong line. Just imagine if his line was better, that would have, that would have been number one run for sure. All right, next at the line, like I said, they're tied right now with 177 points. Both of them right here sitting in fifth is going to be number 311, Naoto Suenaga in the Atlas Tire Drift, Team Fukushima, RZ34, Fair Lady Z. Now, these are 34 Zs that we see, and one of them, you know, may be the older Z, but then two totally different drivers. And two totally different engines. This is VR power coming around. Look at that, real deep into that outer zone one. Just hanging on there. Him getting into it, into that outer zone two, swinging back around to this outer zone three. Oh, real shallow through that zone. Not sure what happened from the start there. Wasn't able to adjust himself and get into that zone early on. Um, well, just line score wise, I think I'm gonna have to give him a perfect 10. He was on the line right there. Yeah, then he fills outside zone one very good, but not as much angle and not as much excitement, I think, compared to Hibino's one. Now, doesn't fill the outside zone three area uh, from where he's supposed to, so. Yeah, definitely left a lot out there because halfway through is when he got into that zone. And right here, that transition, it looks like he transitioned a little too early, not finding himself where he wanted to be early on in that zone. Yeah, it's so I was gonna say two totally different. I was gonna say he's gonna get a higher line score than Hibino because he's more of the Careful, be on the line versus Gubino throwing the car around like a madman. And here we are, 79 for his first qualify run. All right, and uh, we've watched practice, so we're just you know giving you a heads up on some of these drivers that you could look out for. And there is another driver here, um, Masanori Kohashi. He was laying down some pretty gnarly uh, practice runs today. Yeah, we're going to see how he's going to do here from 4th to 5th because Kohashi's currently sitting in 4th. He's got about a 50-point jump on the next driver at sitting at in 5th. And here he is bringing it around into that outer zone 1. Looks like he left a little bit there into that outer zone 1. Not too bad through that outer zone 2, bringing it back around into this outer zone 3. And once again, not able to get deep into that zone early on, which is going to you know, affect his qualify stop, run. Because I'm like, hey gonna be crazy. I know you I keep talking and you're jinxing short. them. Yeah. I'll just stop. I'll just shut up. But right here, a little bit too much angle, leaves outside zone one fairly early. A little bit of space at outside zone two. Doesn't fill outside zone three fully. Um and also four too so yeah it comes a little short yeah very short at outside zone one not something that we do want to see. There was a lot of angle, but um, line-wise, he is. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot left on the table for him. Exactly. All right, we'll see what they're going to give him. You know, you know what we didn't say though. Suenago, the last one that just drove, 
He got first at Sugo. Yes, he did. See if he can back to back. And here we are, 81 for his first qualified run for Kohashi. All right, this next driver coming up. He's been moving up in the ranks. Number 31, Kodai Sobagiri in the Shibata Racing Yokohama GR86. He got third at Fuji, second at Sugo. The only thing left now is top of the podium right here. Until then, he's got to land a solid qualify run. And here he is about to start it off on his first qualify run here. Approaching a 3-2-1, bringing it into this outer zone one. Whoa. Nice job, real deep. Looked like he dipped the tire late in that outer zone one right there. Bringing it back around through the outer zone two. And there he is right there, trying to get into that zone early on into that outer zone three with a strong finish through outer zone four. Yeah, so it looks like he was a little late at outside zone three, but you know, a few tire dips at the initiation area and surpassing the outside zone is gonna hurt, um, you know, there's a few points deduction, but I would have to say most likely everything else, he is filling the zone very well. Uh, clean job by uh, this young driver, Sobagiri. And it's the, uh, what kind of excitement he brought to the table for the style and the angle judge. Exactly, it was, it was crazy. Yesterday during practice, he was driving up the straight and I guess they forgot to pin his hood down because it ended up flying up. Luckily, didn't damage the windshield or anything like that. Able to go back to his pits, get everything squared away, and get back into this practice. So here we are awaiting Sobagiri score. Three drivers. This was just now the third driver right here, sitting third overall in points at 239. And there you are, 90. 90. Sitting in second now for Qualify, right be behind Kanta, who is sitting at a 91. Now we are down to our last two drivers for the first round of Qualify. And that's right, first round. So we're going to go through a whole nother round of these 44 drivers, getting one more chance at landing that top spot to beat Kanta at a 91. And here we are. Till then, we're going to see Kazumi Takahashi in the TMS Racing Team Cylon Tire BMW E92 run his first Qualify run. by the drone, let's see what he's got. Here he is, early on right there, initiation through that outer zone one, nice shot through that zone, filling that zone, and the smoke trail behind, not stopping, bringing it back around into this outer zone three here, nice shot through that zone, leaving a little bit early through that zone, trying to make up for it right there, throwing some hard angle through the finish. Yeah, so the same here. Um, does a great job mostly, but uh, does leave outside zone three a little early. And uh, he has a little bit of safe space at outside zone four. He was able to stick it, you know, going around outside zone three. There you go right there. Kind of goes into angle, but doesn't make it all the way out to the line. Does a good job at outside zone two. So we'll see right there, 89. So we got some huge scores coming in late in qualify, which we always see and expect every round. And then uh, if the camera's on Robbie right now, he's over here trying to catch a butterfly. But till then, <laughs> this birthday boy right here, he just turned 14 four days ago. Let's see if he can get the trophy that he wanted and he asked for for his birthday, number 771, Hiroya Mino in the Cusco Racing GR Yaris. Coming through the chicane now. Look at that, really aggressive right there into the outer zone one. Nice shot, filling that zone, bringing it back around through outer zone two. This kid can manipulate this car and put it where it needs to be put. Right there, right in that back line right there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to recheck. That might be the perfect line run. That might be the perfect line run. Right here. Oh, uh, he dips the tire before the outside zone one. I'm gonna have to give him a deduction for that. Right here, perfect for the outside zone two. Fills outside zone three from the beginning. Looks like he is pretty much on there, so. And then outer zone four right there, the back edge of it. Yep. And, you know, so, this takes a lot because these cars don't have much of a rear end to get into yeah, that you, zone. You, you really have to put the car. It's like putting your tire 
on the edge instead of using your bumper. And you know, we're, we're looking at these by bumper. Some of these cars have little bumper extensions and some cheater parts on it to make it longer. But this is raw. My rear tire is on, you know, the, the back the line. bumper pretty yeah, much. Exactly. Right on the and line. That's really, really hard to do. And I know if you've done, you know, wall rides, it's very hard to do. Right here, let's Here's check this out. Yeah, he does dip a tire at the entry, but right there, pretty much perfect on the outside zone one. Outside zone two, super on the line. And right here, outside zone three, look at that. See? He's like right there. And if there was a wall right there, that would have been an amazing shot right there, bringing it around, and then he rode the wall right there through outer zone four. So now we're just waiting for the anticipation right here. Is it going to be better than Kanta's yep. first qualifier? <laughs> there you go, 94 for Hiroya Minoa. All right, let's. Let's right now, let's, our points champion right now. No, you know what? The 14-year-old is leading right now the championship, and he's leading the qualify that we have. That's it, guys. The 14-year-old is, is leading. Let's go home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like Robbie said, he's sitting at 248, so he's eight points ahead of Takahashi, who is in second. So, yeah, he's got a little bit of a points gap, and this is definitely going to boost him forward. 14 years old. He just turned 14 four days ago. So we'll see how it's going to be. We're going back through the start right here. 44 drivers getting one more chance at qualify. Are they going to be able to knock Hiroya Minoa down? He's at a 94 point qualify run right there. You guys just saw it. If you missed it, rewind back and get back to it. But yeah, so that was a pretty exciting run uh, from all these drivers that were done. And uh, we're going to go into the second run. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be, you know, everybody's going to come in a little, they're going to come in swinging harder for the second run, so we'll see how that's going to be. Well, there you are. All right, so we'll be right back after the short break. We'll be right back. The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid, Valentine. さと安全性。オンロード。オフロード。世界中で活躍する。ケンダ。その信頼を支える。西運性、安定性と対魔能性。世界が認めた技術と信頼を街のりである。高品質となる特の価格、太陽ポテンシャルをあなたに。ケン
バリのタイヤ What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. In a world of extremes, this is where they're refined. The real deal. Cusco. Tenton to Kakshin. Ogura Clutch no technology o g y o s h i k u Champion o Toru Tame no Clutch. Ogura Racing Clutch. ORC. それではフォーミュラードリフトの審査方式について説明しようフォーミュラードリフトは3人の審査員によって審査が行われる各審査員は走行ラインをチェックするラインジャッジドリフトアングルをチェックするアングルジャッジそして走りを統括的にチェックするスタイルジャッジが担当するラインジャッジアングルジャッジの審査のためコースには4から5箇所の審査ポイントが設定されている。設定されているのは主にコーナークリップ付近、ポイントとゾーン、コースによってはタッチゴーがあり、この4から5箇所の審査ポイントでマシンの挙動がチェックされる。ラインとアングルジャッジは審査のポイント、1箇所につき最高5点、または10点。審査ポイントは全部で4から5箇所、最高30点がドライバーに与えられる。もう一つがスタイルジャッジスタイルジャッジは主に走行中の車全体の流れをチェックするこのスタイルジャッジでは最高40点が与えられるすべての点数を合計すると最高100点ドライバーたちはこの100点を目指しチャレンジするのだ
さて審査基準は次の通りである LINE ジャッジでは審査ポイントで確実にクリップについているかが重要クリップから離れていくに従い得点は下がってしまう。アングルジャッジはクリップでのドリフトアングルが審査の対象当然アングル角度が大きいほど得点は高くなるが戻ってしまったり不安定な場合は減点の対象となるそしてスタイルジャッジスピードスムーズさ迫力またドライビングから感じられるコミットパッションもスタイルジャッジにおいて重要な要素である審査では車の不必要な挙動ブレやふらつきメリハリのない走行などが減点の対象となるまたスタート時のエンジンストップフライングやパイロンタッチ計3回審査コーナーでのスピンは即座に0点コースからはみ出した場合は減点または0点の場合もあるステアリングの角度が0度になるようなアンダーステアも含め審査員の判断で0点になるフォーミュラードリフトジャパン Alright, we're back here for 2023. G Shock presents Formula Drift Japan. This is the second half of Qualify. We already went through 44 drivers. Here we are, starting back at the top to see 44 drivers back at it again to get that top spot. Right now, Hiroya Minoa is sitting at the top with a 94. Yes, the leader of the championship、uh, points right now just laid down a pretty crazy run. Let's see if anybody could better that on their second run. Because I know a lot of these drivers try to take it easy on their first run. Just get a score and、uh, come in、uh, swinging for the second. So hopefully they can come in and、uh, show us something to. I mean, he gets a good time to watch. He watches all 43 drivers go, see what's going down. But yeah, those of you that are just tuning in, you missed out some good qualify runs.、Oh, there、man. it is on the、car、left right there. 33rd place is car number 38. It's, I'm not going to say the name because it looks like a bad word. And、uh, 32nd place is Matt. <laughs> oh. I think it's Takata, but they cut it off at K.、So. But here we are. We're at the Grand Snow Okuibuki Drift Park right here in the Shika Prefecture. Back at the top of the roster, number 283. Tsubasa Nagasawa in the hardcore Rocket Bunny Racing R32 Skyline. Got it incomplete on his first qualify run. He's got to throw down, make it happen. He just debuted his car last round. Looks like he's still struggling through that outer zone one, but able to get through. Last time he completed there, getting back around into this outer zone three, but man, he's got to throw down some points here, riding that back line of that outer zone three into this outer zone four here. Is that going to be enough to get him in the top 32 slot? Man, it looked like he kind of got, couldn't go right to angle. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, he went right, at, right to angle, but it looked like he started to pull out angle. Right here, doesn't fill the outside zone three from the beginning. Gets right on the edge though,、uh, towards the end, so that's a good job. He misses、uh, a good portion of outside zone two as well.、Mm. It's、Line、points wise, on the board, but is it、hard. enough? Yeah, it's gonna be、uh, starting us off right here. Like I said, he got an incomplete, started off rough. Yeah. And yeah, he definitely was fighting that car through outer zone one, trying to keep it in hard angle. And let's see what they're going to give him 68. I don't know Unfortunately, if that's, that's not going to be high enough for this,、uh, these top 44 drivers. 12 drivers are going to be going home today. Unfortunately, this is the second to last round. Last round is going to be at Okayama. 
Here we are, another incomplete that we had on the first run of qualifying number seven, Junji Yamamoto in the Good Ride 2JZ FD3S project. And you heard it right, he's got a 2J under this RX-7 hood. Here he is approaching the 321, bringing it around here. Looks like he's holding a little bit back this time around so he can get a solid run in the books, but is this run gonna be enough? Missing that outer zone two right there. Huge correction entering that outer zone three and overall it's not looking clean and good for him. Yeah, you said it. Um, very, very uh, far from the deep end of the zone. A tire dip at the beginning of the outside zone one, or before the outside zone one. Tire not even in the box for the outside zone two. Goes in a little late, leaves a little early outside zone three. And not super close, not super close for um, the outside zone four area. Yeah, pretty far from the outside zone four too, so line wise, Line score wise, not going to be something promising. There you go, 65. Not sure if he's running into some issues or not with the vehicle, but not the cleanest we've seen uh, Yamamoto do. That might be it for his weekend. I'm not sure what the score and the cutoff is and the bubble is, but I think being the 60s is probably nowhere near being um, safe. Exactly. At this point. This driver may not be safe either. Sitting at a 71 on his first qualified run, number 73, Iguo Saito in his Motis West Auto R35 GTR. Here he is coming around into this outer zone one, leaving outer zone one early right there. Giving a lot more excitement through his run, but unfortunately not laying it where it needs to be. Not too bad through that outer zone three. But the first two zones kind of struggled to beat where he needed to be. Yeah, so leaving outside zone one, dipping a tire and leaving outside zone, not, you know, filling it as much as he's supposed to, not filling outside zone two as deep as he should be. And getting into uh, the outside zone three from the beginning to the end, does a fairly good job there. So I would have to say some of the areas, good job, but some of the areas not so good. Um, see if that's going to be able to, that's going to be good enough to bump up the score uh, from what he had earlier with the 71. Line-wise, he does a little bit better than how he did with, uh, with his first run, but now it really depends on how much, how many points he's going to be picking up from the style and the angle. There you go, 76. So it was a bump in his points, but is that going to be enough to get him in that top 32 spot? Right now, it's not looking too good. Mid-70s is not the safe zone, I don't think. But we'll see here, this driver right here sitting low in the 60s, number 12, Nagayasu Miyagi in the Car Guy Racing ZN686, got a 63 on his first qualify run. A lot of areas to improve on. Let's see how he's gonna improve and how he watched his replay on his first qualify run. Here he is, a lot more angle coming into outer zone one, but looks like he kind of stalled the car a little bit and held on and let the car settle too long. And possibly is an incomplete leaving that outer zone one. I mean, that was a very dynamic way to uh, initiate. He looked like he was doing a good job filling the outside zones one, but he got a little too far, a little bit too much angle, could not dig himself out of it. Pretty much basically straightened the car going to the outside zone two area. And that's going to be an unchaseable lead, so it's going to be an incomplete for Miyagi's second run. And uh, 63 is a score. For him to bank on for the qualify, that's probably not going to be good enough to make it through the qualify. And there you are. The official incomplete. All right, next at the line, number 41, Shichi Uemura in the TMS Racing Team Cylon Tire Uemura Sangyo, JZX100 Mark II. He's got a 70 currently. Let's see what he's gonna do to make it better. Like we were talking about earlier, struggled through practice, able to throw it on a solid run right there, right there, trying to get back on it. Oh, and too much, too much rotation through that outer zone one. 
Judges are going to look, have to look back at it, and you can see the rest of it. Once he threw himself out, out of line at the outer zone one, unable to get to the outer zone two, and just after that, it was just kind of sloppy from there. Yeah, that was a pretty sloppy run by Uemura here. A lot of angle. The outside zone one looked really good. Now, outside zone two, there's probably no score for line. Gets in late at outside zone three. And also doesn't feel outside zone four as much as he should be either. All right, here it is. The scores for his second qualifier run. Waiting for the anticipation here. Got a 70. Here it is, 69. So unfortunately, it's a drop in his score. Yeah, the big mistake he made from outside zone one to two. Something we could not ignore. All right, ready to start, get his second qualified run in. You got number 86, Kenichi Takashima, and the Team Kazama with Power Vehicle, JZX100 Chaser. 79 is what he's sitting at, and look at that right there, coming in really aggressive. Wow. Trying to improve his score here. Nice shot, filling that zone, bringing it back around, wow. filling outer zone two there. Trying to get it early on through that outer zone three. Oh! Possibly making a huge mistake in that transition, transitioning a little bit too early through that outer zone three and possibly straightening halfway through that zone and completing him. But we're going to see. We're going to see what the judges have to say. But, man, phenomenal job staying in the course, riding the back line, bringing it back around through the outer zone two here, filling that zone right there with his back bumper. But right there, maybe over-rotated too much early on through that outer zone three, having finding himself having to correct halfway through that zone. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to probably incomplete that because, I mean, it's an unchaseable lead. I mean, uh, that was a hard park at outside zone three um, after he threw the angle. Almost had to straighten coming out of outside zone two. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be an incomplete, I think. Waiting for the official. Right there, the, there's the official, the incomplete. So 79, hopefully that will be enough for him to fill one of the top 32 slots. Next up, ready to go, is gonna be number 19, Yuchi Amagai in the Good Ride Motorsports with Perfect Style S15. Not sitting pretty at a 66, has a lot, lot more to improve on, but here he is approaching the 3-2-1 here. Looks like he's a lot more aggressive this time around, bringing it into the outer zone one, the outer zone two here. Could have been deeper in the outer zone two, didn't get into the outer zone three early on right there. Able to get there halfway through, bringing it back around through that outer zone four, but still a little shallow. Yeah, I mean, I just have one thing to say to Amagai. I mean, I don't know what he's in such a rush for to get through. There's not a whole lot of angle. Like, look at outside zone four. He's barely angled and doesn't even get to the outside of the outside zone. So, you know, gripping up too much, you know, not filling the zones the way he's supposed to. He's just, just rushing to get through the track, finish his, finish his run. Yeah, and that's the thing that we've seen, I think, most of the season. He's been uh, doing a lot of, you know, running through the tracks as fast as he can instead of focusing on what he needs to focus on. There you go, 74 for a second qualify run. Definitely increases points dramatically, but is that going to be enough? Next driver is sitting pretty pretty right now. Pretty pretty? Pretty pretty. <laughs> pretty pretty, yeah. Pretty pretty, pretty at pretty. an 80. He's sitting 80 right now on his first qualify run, number 610, K Murakami in the Village Up JZX100 Mark II. Not much to lose here. Let's see how he's going to do. Approaching the 3 2 1 this time, bringing it into this outer zone one. Little shallow through the half of it right there. Able to fill it through the outer zone two, adjusting himself just a little bit. Not able to get into the outer zone three early on. And that's been the common issue that a lot of these drivers had so far is that outer zone three to make sure that they're finding themselves in that zone early on 
not halfway through. You can yeah, see how outside you'll... zone three is really hard to tackle unless you're filling it from the beginning. Now, because if you the radius changes if you kind of go in from a little after the zone starts, you have to all of a sudden kick more angle to uh, make sure you're on the right line going to the outside zone three. So you would have to try to get as close as possible to that wall right at the beginning of the outside zone three and fill the zone. Um, that's pretty much the only way to get a full score there, uh, filling it from the beginning. Exactly, and that's what a lot of these drivers are struggling on. There you go, 78 for his second qualified run, so he's in a bank on that 80 he got originally. All right, next driver at the line. Got a 72, number 963, Daichi Mizutani and the Mizutani Motors, Mariosha Racing S15. We'll see how Mizutani does here. Nice shot, looks really aggressive into the outer zone one, real Whoa. deep right there, hanging on just by a thread, dipping two tires, bringing it back around into the outer zone two to the outer zone three, hard flick right there. Filling that zone early on, able to hang on. Probably one of the hardest transitions we've seen from outer zones two to outer zone three. Yeah, that was pretty, he flicked it really hard and he was on throttle. That was a uh, pretty impressive. Now, just a little bit too wide at outside zone one. Let's go ahead and see. Right there, dips the tire at outside zone one. Have to make a deduction for that. But I would have to say other than that, I mean, uh, line wise, he feels you know, outside zone three, fairly good. He does leave it a little early, uh, but not bad on the line, and I think definitely a little bit better than how he ran earlier. But he did have that slight stall at outside zone three when he was trying to get out of uh, throwing the huge amount of angle and getting back on throttle. Let's see what the style judge has to say. Is that gonna matter a lot or not? Man, hats off to these spectators fighting, these soldiers. Off, fighting off this sun. I'm telling you, when Thank you're out you, in the yeah. sun, it's literally it's, about 15 degrees hotter. It's hot, it's blazing. There 83 right there, huge increase, 11 point increase for Mizutani. So that should be go. enough to see. So the hard flicks, a lot of angle, a lot of throttle, um, and making it look dynamic definitely got Sean Adriano happy. And he kept it smooth, that's right. He said he kept it smooth. Except the bobble at outside zone three. See, I even sound like a judge right now. You really do, but next up, this guy right here by the judges got an incomplete. Not by the judges, by himself, I guess. Yeah, He's uh, sitting at a zero right now. Number 17, Jin Horino in the Good Ride Sports with Tops Racing Mew S14. He made contact with that first outer zone wall. Look at that. Not phased by it, bringing some aggression into the outer zone one. Oh, almost making the same mistake, just clipping that sponge right there, bringing it back around through the outer zone two to the outer zone three here. What, what, what? And man, he is getting super wild out here. Knocking out two of the cones right there in outer zone three. Those are two meters back too. So he was deep in that zone. And you can see right there. Yeah, there's many, there's a, there's many corrections at the outside zone one, outside zone two, um, you know, doesn't make it to the outside zone, outside zone three, dipping a lot of tires off there. Like, I mean, to be honest, he, like, Reno is, reno has been all over the place. And that's going to be an incomplete because that's going to be an unchaseable lead. There you go, two incompletes. That's going to knock him out for sure. Very unfortunate for him. It, it just seems like he's really trying to understand this car because this is the first year of him having it. It's got a VR under the hood. It's I, a very aggressive I, car. I think this is just my opinion, but I think it's just you're you have to drive it a lot harder when the car's gripped up. Yeah. So I think having to drive it hard all the time, you're on the edge all the time. So maybe take out some grip, you know? And I, yeah, that's in it. That, that's an, uh, how can I say it? Like right now, his front end kind of, when he threw the car in outside zone one, and his front end, you know, the car wanted to correct and straighten because when your car is sliding, and even if you're on the e-brake, the rear tires are trying to stop the car. So when the car is doing the, too much of that, the front, like let's say your counter steering, then the rear doesn't slide over. You always want it to be almost over rotating, but in this case, 
It looks like he gripped up a little bit too much and it started to pull angle out. Okay, so I think uh, car number 75, Koji Nagase from Team Kazama with Power Vehicles just called the competition timeout. He's currently sitting at a 78 on his first qualify run. And I gotta say, I don't know if that's gonna be safe enough. So he needs to get his car squared away. But man, you only get one competition timeout. But then again, you need to make it to the competition. So exactly, this is really important. I mean, even if you're gonna have to sacrifice using your competition timeout and you're not gonna have any for tandem, at least making it into the top uh, 32 is probably a little bit more important than sitting out for the next day. Exactly. So we might go ahead and go uh, to the next driver. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and move along to Benjamin Chim, all the way from Singapore, driving the JZ80 Supra. He's been in the series for quite a few years now, you know, uh, missing out because of the whole COVID mess uh, that we had where a lot of people couldn't trans, um, travel in the country travel, and everything yeah, like travel that. Travel from outside but, of Japan. Like we were talking to him before previously, whenever he came back to the series, he said he was trying to keep his skills up with uh, doing the sim and everything. And sim's a huge thing right now. <laughs> with a lot of these drivers. Let's see how Benjamin's gonna do coming around into this 3-2-1. He got a 71 Ooh. on his first qualify run. Nice shot there. Oh, oh, over rotating there into the outer zone too. Very unfortunate. Is 71 gonna be enough? I don't know. Outside zone one looks really promising, but. Um, look at this, outside zone one, looks really good. Fills it perfectly. Then uh, came a little short on the outside zone two and I, went out. And I gotta say, his first run, we were like, man, he's very, he's, he's gripped up, what's going on? And then right there, you saw that, looks like he let it settle, but he got too much on it, got too excited for that outer zone two and just couldn't find it, uh, find that grip into that outer zone two. Yeah, and you can see right lead. there, oh, you just saw it. That was Nagase in the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles crew trying to get that car squared away with his five-minute competition timeout. But till then, next at the line is going to be number 33, Shigahisa Sasayama in the DSL.com Lexus RC340 F-Spec. Yeah, looking at his score from the first one, not looking good. Hopefully he can up the score somehow. We got very aggressive into the outer zone one. Wow, nice. Filling that zone, bringing it back through nice. outer zone two. Nice job riding that back edge of that outer zone two, but looks like he held back a little bit, unable to get into that outer zone three, which is gonna be huge points deduction for him in that line. Yeah, so outside zone one and two looks very good, but outside zone three, he did miss out. He did dip a tire at the end of outside zone, uh, at the outside zone too, so there's a deduction too, but not getting into the zone is going to hurt his score. But I would have to say line score is a little bit better than his uh, first run, so we'll see how, how much that's gonna help his uh, total score out. All right, there you are, 79, so a 10 point increase for Sasayama. All right, next, ready to go at the line is going to be number eight, Ryo Okabe, and his Team Kazama with Power Vehicles, JZX100 Mark II. 85 was his first qualified run score. We'll see how he is going to do this time around. Not a lot to lose here. Here he is coming into the outer zone one. Nice Whoa. job filling that zone. Beautiful job getting right back on it here into this outer zone two. Uh, Swinging it back around early on right. into the outer zone three. Look at riding that edge. And that was the one thing he Whoa. did last time. He rode it a little bit too deep through that outer zone three on his first qualify run. But looks like he adjusted himself and made it happen through that zone. But it might have affected him a little bit through that outer zone two. All right. Not going to lie. Line, I'm just looking at the line, that's why I'm getting excited. But uh, very good, very good line score from Okabe, in my opinion. Actually, probably the ties, ties with a number one qualifier on line score. Um, so I would say that was very good. And there you go. There you go, 88. 
He has some room and style, but I think he keeps the car a little loose for him to be able to control. So I think he did a good, you know, that was good tactics instead of trying to grip up the car and make make it look speedy or, you know, crazy. He stuck with the, you know, being smooth and, you know, trying to hit all the marks and he, 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 his plan worked out. Yeah, he definitely locked himself a spot into that top 32. But next up, this driver sitting at an 82 right now. Number 125, Yoshichika Tamagawa and the Car Guy Racing JZA 80 Supra. And we talked about it previous years. This is actually a free Supra he got years ago. And here he is, oh, just hanging on right there through that outer zone one. Nice job. Looks like he was a little shallow through outer zone two. And in outer zone three, a little shallow there too as well. Yeah, but his outside zone one, if he didn't dip that tire, that would have been a perfect uh, score in that area. Outside zone two and three. Uh, he was a little shallow on the line. It doesn't fill the outside zone three as well as he should have. Yeah, this is coming off of a long break for him too. He missed out on Sugo coming back out here for Okuibuki, but that's a big thing I gotta say. Sugo to coming from Sugo track to this, it's a huge difference. This is a lot of uh, technical skills and everything that they need out here. While Sugo is a huge track, yeah, it's more of a. There you, you go, know, 83, one point increase. So at at Sugo, it's more of the you know lay down the throttle and go. Uh, but here it's more of the, you know, you have to get close to walls, you have to get close to... You have to get close to, you know, the outside zone. Well, you have to get close to the outside zone everywhere, but then there's walls and, you know, things going, you know, going uphill and whatnot. So it's been uh, very different. Here we are. Next up, number 38, Tadahito Fukada. Been here since day one. Got a 76 on his first qualify run. Ah. Looks like he let his car wait a little too long to settle through that outer zone one, making an adjustment, bringing it back around into this outer zone three. And yeah, ah. right there, another mistake by him. Not the cleanest run. Oh. And we're almost, not sure if. Yeah, almost corrected. Yeah, we're not sure if this is going to be enough to boost his 76 point first qualifier run. Yeah, his outside zone one was very good. Right on the line at the beginning but he almost straightens coming off the outside zone one, then that being affected, misses the last part of outside zone two, gets into the outside zone three, but leaves way too early. And right here, uh, doesn't fill the zone, or I'm sorry, the last zone as well as he should be either. So, filling the zone on the beginning of outside zone, or at the beginning of the track at the outside zone one is gonna help out his score, but I'm not sure if that's gonna be A crazy uh, amount more than what he had earlier. He's sitting on a 76, but I don't even know if 76 is uh, uh, safe enough. There you go, Ooh. 67. Yeah, that big mistake leaving outside zone one probably definitely affected him. He loses his angle score there. So hopefully the 76 is good enough for him to make it into the top 32. Well, now look. going back to the driver that uh, that uh, take his competition yeah, timeout right time here. Out. Yep. He got a 78 on his first qualify run, which we're not sure if that's going to be safe. So he took his competition timeout, and here he is throwing down his second run. It's going to be number 75, Koji Nagase. He's in the team because I'm with Power Vehicles Lexus IS350C. The only convertible top we got in the series, and here he is coming around through the 3 2 1 into the outer zone one right there, filling that zone. Nice job bringing it back around. And he's going to make up for this competition timeout, bringing it back around into this outer zone three early on right there. Bumper all the way on that back edge. Left a little bit earlier out of that outer zone three, but overall not bad by Nagase. Is it going to be enough to bump his 78 point first qualify run? Yeah, I know he was trying to get deep into the zones, but not quite. He would, outside zone was uh, beautiful, except he dips the tire at the beginning. Outside zone two, a little bit too much angle, leaves it early. Gets into outside zone three early, but leaves it early as well. And uh, right here, doesn't feel outside zone four as much as he should. But uh, from me, he gets the same line score that I gave him earlier too, because he does get pretty deep. And I think, you know, mid, mid to high 20s is very, you know, something very hard to do 
um, out here on the track where there's a lot of pressure, you know, running up the hill, you know, trying to be able to kick the car out next to the wall, so on and so on. So let's see what he gets for the rest of the, uh, from the rest of the judges. Yeah, we'll see in Nagase. He was uh, formerly in FDJ2, moving up to the Pro Series. He was in a JZX100, moving into this new platform this year. And I got to say, he was one of the more aggressive drivers in that FDJ2 series. So we'll see if this is going to be enough for him to make it into the top 32 tandem battles for tomorrow. And like we talked about, yeah, we're going to be doing top 30. There you go, 84. So nice increase for him. It was the competition timeout was maybe worth it. Yeah, it really was, yeah, because I think that might have solidified his spot into the top 32. But yeah, like I was saying, tomorrow's going to be top 32. And then later on that afternoon, we're going to roll into the top 16. Uh, driver's intro or the opening ceremonies, which you're gonna hear myself and Robbie, you know, doing our best to sound cool on the mic. We're not as good as uh, Jared is. Yeah, so. Jared is, you know, he makes it happen. He's. Yeah. But we're amateurs though. Yeah, exactly. We have excuses. Yeah, he's a pro. There you are, the next driver is getting his tires warmed up, ready to go. That right there, 770 Yosh Yoshitatsu Kaneda in his Cusco Racing GR86. Man sitting on an 85 right now. And you know, talking about this area right here, Grand Snow Okuibuki, beautiful establishment. It's uh, primarily a ski snowboard resort. And then in the summertime, they do Gymkhana. They do a little bit of, they do little small uh, act, not activities, uh, events. And then they also do big car shows out here too. Yeah, so if you're in the area, if you're in the Shiga Prefecture area. Especially you know, in the winter time, yeah, come check them out. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure you could look online and find all these, you know, drift events or car events that they have all over the place. So uh, this is one of the favored uh, South, like Jim slightly Kana. southern, yeah, slightly southern Japan um, favored area. Very popular for a lot of the car shows and the car meets to be at. Yeah, they have quite the the amount of parking spots or parking pads that they host. Uh, next weekend we'll be here for FDJ2 and FDJ3. That'll be on one of the parking pads. They're going to have a track layout for them. They're not yeah, going to be on this same state. track. Yeah. And I got to say, this is the second to last, you know, this is like the second to last live stream we're going to have as English only. Because next weekend's going to be both English, Japanese, one live stream. Yep. But here we are. Till then, we'll talk more about that later. 85 is what he's sitting at. Let's see how Kaneda is going to do on his second qualify run. His run-up's nice coming into this outer zone one. Looks like he hung out a little bit too long right there, but getting right back on it into this outer zone two. Maybe too early because he wasn't able to get all the way out to the outer zone two, but able to make it all the way out to the outer zone three. Trying to piece the whole track together, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to bump him up from an 85. I don't, line-wise, no, because a tire dip at the outside zone one doesn't feel it all the way, but very close. And uh, outside zone two is pretty far away. Outside zone three pretty much gets a person perfect line score there, that area. But also outside zone four misses a huge uh, amount of the outside zone four. So line wise, I don't know. It's not going to be better than what he had earlier. But we'll have to see what the rest yeah, of the judges yeah, have we'll to say. Have to see. The Cusco Racing Girl waiting for the anticipation on whether or not this point is going to be greater or less than his first qualify run. There you go. That's a fan with the car number 770. Unfortunately, that's a drop in points. Next at the... This breeze. I know that right. breeze felt good, but next at the line coming all the way from China, number 35, Sha Chang Hao in the Ling Long Racing Drift Team Orange Asia R35 GTR. He's sitting on a 77. Also known as Natsu uh, driving this GTR. Yeah, 77. That might be close too, but uh, we'll see. Because a lot of drivers have, you know, been getting better scores on their second run. Exactly. So we're going to see how he's going to do this time around while making some of the fixes that he missed, especially the zones that he was missing. Very experienced driver. He gives lessons out in China. He competes out there also. And here he is coming in hot into that outer zone one right there. 
getting a tire in the zone, could have been a little bit deeper through that zone. Flicking it back around, oh, well, maybe too much right there, trying to hold on, but pretty much just parking the car and roasting tires. Yeah, that was, uh, he, 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 he saved it. Yeah. He was about to spin and saved it, but he was hard on the left foot braking. That was a huge, huge stall. And that's gonna be an unchaseable lead because that is not a good pace that we wanna see. Like he was doing a standing burnout pretty much. Yeah, it was. Hey, I'll but give you that, it was cool. cool for yeah. demos. These... Man, not to out here doing demos. Yeah, that was definitely cool yeah. right there. But you know, he, he was trying to swing the car around to be really dynamic, so. Um, unfortunately, that's an incomplete. I hope that 77 is going to be good enough to uh, keep him in the uh, top 32. Yeah, we'll have to see here. Till then, we still got about another 24 plus drivers to go. At the line is number 96, Katsuhiro Meguro in the Nissan Origin Labo JZX100 Mark II. 79 is what he's sitting at. Let's see what he's going to do to improve his 79 point first qualify run. And here he is coming around into the outer zone one. Very aggressive leaving that outer zone one, bringing it back around. Ooh, a little hold up there through that outer zone three, trying to let the car settle, but getting right back on it through that zone. We'll All right, I just want to check on the outside zone three, but line wise, I think uh, very good. Um, he might better his line score from the earlier one. There's a wobble at the entrance. He has a little bit of space at outside zone one. Fills outside zone two fairly well. Fills outside zone three right on the line throughout the outside zone three. So I'd have to say that would be a, a pretty much perfect run at the outside zone three area. But uh, really depends on what the other judges have scored because he did have that slight stall at the after the during the outside zone one area and uh, a lot of adjustments getting through uh, staying on the outside line. But well, looks like he got in the boosted points right there from a 79 to an 83, which seems pretty safe at this point in qualify. All right, next at the line is number 30, Takumi Sato in the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles JZX100 Chaser, sitting on a 77. Definitely would like to bump up that score. A lot of room for him to uh, pick up more points. Yeah, and he's coming all the way from Hokkaido. That's way up north. We're all the way down south or mid-region south. Leaves outside zone one a little early. He ain't trying to go home this early. Here he is bringing it back around into this outer zone three. Oh, but maybe too much. Is 77 going to be enough for him to move on? No. Because him and uh, Sha Chung Hao is going to be in the same boat, having a 77 on the first qualify run, but incompleting on their second. Yeah, then it's going to depend on their style score. Yep. So it really depends on what Sean gave them, if they're a tie. So, you know, one of them is going to have to have a talk with Sean because, you know, drivers don't drivers don't like judges, so it's cool. Well, my... I get it. <laughs> and we're very nice. We're very nice people, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, you guys are no, good but people. No, 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 a lot of people don't like us, but that's that's part of the job and that's, that's fine. I mean, some of you like us and some of you don't, so it's cool. It's the name of the game, name yeah, of the it title. Is, it is, it is. But, let's move on. Yeah, let's, let's get this go. show on the All road. Right, I think this is almost the second half for the second run exactly. of, uh, of Qualify. So we have uh, car number 80. Yuta Komatsu from Komatsu Racing, he has an 82 on his first run, so I think he's already pretty much in the safe zone. So all he's got to do is better the score or even go for like just something ridiculously higher. And I think he's capable of doing it because you know his first run looked pretty uh, clean. Exactly, we're gonna see how he's gonna do this time around. Here he is approaching that 3 2 1 now. Look at Whoa. that, very aggressive this time around. Getting Whoa. right back on it, trying to stay in it right here. Ah. Correction, leaving that outer zone one into that outer zone two right there. Looks like he overshot that outer zone one just a little bit. And I gotta say, that was probably one of the cooler approaches we've seen through that outer zone one. What, what, what? Outside zone two. Man, the outside zone one looked. 
ridiculous. I mean, that looked pretty nice. Built his own pretty good, but I think he kind of had to pull some angle out and uh, went a little too deep in the angle at the outside zone one at the beginning and couldn't make a nice arc. Had to straighten almost a little bit going to the outside zone four area as well. So, man, I mean, if that would have went one way, it could have been something great. We'll see if it's going to be enough to bump his 82-point first qualify run. The Canoa Oil Girl cheering on one of the drivers that's rocking Canoa Oil. Everybody wave at her. Hey. 87. Wow. So nice improvement right there. And think about it. With the mistake he made, he still got a good score. Just imagine if he didn't have to pull out the angle oh, I from know. outside zone one to two, that would have probably been in the 90s. Yeah, he's sitting top five right and, now, and, I believe. And field outside zone two. That's he true. That's where he had down. to make the correction because he yes, was adjusting yes. himself. But here we are. Next up, got a 75, number 870, Akihiro Hanawa in the T-square with good ride, DGR Eternal. Yeah, he yeah, he's sitting yeah, he, 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 he's sitting on a 75, so that's not good. He's going to have to. He's going to have to get a better score here. Let's see, it looks like he's going to push this VQ to the limits here. Coming around in this outer zone one. Oh, no. making an adjustment, avoiding the wall after that outer zone one, bringing it back around into this outer zone three here. And unfortunately, it might not be enough. So let's see right here. Yeah, so washed out, big adjustment outside zone one to two, doesn't make it out to outside zone two, doesn't make it out, or he makes it out to outside zone three a little too early, gets on the left foot brake, tries to stay in the, uh, in the, um, trying to stay into the drift there through that outer zone three here, right here's where he kind of left foot brake. Able to hang on, make an adjustment after that, halfway through that outer zone three, but able to finish strong. We'll see. Judges are talking about it, seeing if it's an incomplete, I believe, after that outer zone one to the outer zone two. He may have straightened a little bit through that zone. Here's the adjustment. There's a quick adjustment there, but then right here, huge adjustment right there, almost straightening. And the change in pace right here, those angle almost spins out. Stalls it, left foot braced it, tries to play it off. That's two major mistakes that he made in the lead position. Now, if that was a, a tandem, what is oh, the yeah. chase car going to do? They're pretty Going much choked up. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, so most likely we're probably going to have to incomplete this run. And even if we did give him a score, I mean, I'm just assuming, but as a line score, that's going to not be good enough. Um, and, there you go. You know, I might, I, that might not even be good enough to make it into the top 32. So, Yeah, like you said, that was actually three huge corrections, and it was early on, too. And like Robbie said, when they're coming in hot through the 3-2-1 into outer zone one, there's no time for corrections there. They have to get on it. That's going to cause a collision. That's what happened last year in the tandem battles is we saw a collision happen right there into the outer zone one into the wall. So definitely a dangerous spot to be making a correction at. Yeah, it's like, you know, the driver behind you is committed to, so the more mistakes the lead car is going to do, you're pretty much screwing over the chase car and making it harder. Um, what we want to see as a lead car is honest, clean runs with no bobbles, a lot of angle, outside line to give the freedom for the chase car to give a good chase. Um, so if you're qualifying, which is going to be pretty much your lead run when you're in the tandem position, um, we want you to do an honest, clean run that doesn't screw over uh, the team. So let's see this next driver do an honest, clean run. Number nine, Yukio Matsui in the ocean with M2 Evolution, F22 BMW. Powered by an LS right here, bringing it around into this outer zone oh. one. The only VA we got in the series right now. Here he is, bringing it back around into this outer zone three. Could have filled outer zone two a little bit more, but able to fill all of outer zone three. And it looks like he slowed his momentum down a little bit through that outer zone three to make sure that he filled the zone completely. Yeah, outer two, horrible. <laughs> yeah. Outer zone one, pretty, pretty good job. He did have to kind of, you know, adjust himself, wait to get to the outside zone to get back on throttle. Maybe that's why he lost momentum going to outside zone two. Doesn't feel outside zone three from the beginning, but fills it uh, a fairly good amount 
So um, I would have to say, I would have to say, uh, fairly good run. He's going to get a score in, and uh, we'll see what that score is going to be. All right, we're going to see what the official score is right there. 78. Ooh. Ooh. He went from a 76 to a 78, but is that going to be enough to get into the top 32? Oh, man. Damn, that's going to be really hard. Um, and I don't know where the bubble's at, so what the score is. All right, here we are next to the line. Got an 87, very impressive, but has some room to build. Number 666, Shuichimano in the Vitor Racing with Chadi Boy, one via. Here he is coming around to this outer zone one, deep into that zone. Looks like he dipped the tire, adjusting himself into this outer zone two here, bringing it back around. Missing a little bit of the aggression that we were talking about on his first qualify run from outer zones two to outer zone three. We'll see here, is that gonna be enough? 87 was pretty solid, but he was lacking once again in the energy from that outer zone two to the outer zone three. Yeah, and I think I am giving him deductions for the line score, and he has two more points um, on his first run. So I'm actually giving him, giving him two more points less than the first run because of the mistakes that he, he made, you know, dipping tires. Stuff like that, but uh, yeah, you know what? But he got an 80 this time, but he's sitting on an 87, so that's really, really exactly uh, impressive. All right, I saw someone in there. Yes, we have the chat going. I'm reading it, I'm checking it out. I could, it's kind of hard in and out of these uh, back to back to back runs that we're doing to kind of talk about what's going on. I see y'all posting the scores, you guys are pretty much yeah, spot on or close to. Not be just because we're not talking about it doesn't mean that we're not reading it. Well, Kenny is. I'm yeah, Robbie, yeah. Reading. We usually check it out after two. So, yeah, we're checking y'all out. Let's check this next driver out. 78 is what he's sitting at. Tanaka coming in into that outer zone one. Real deep Whoa. in that zone. Look at that. Kicking up the smoke from the dust. Whoa, Bringing it back around angle. outer zone two into this outer angle. zone three earlier on right there. Knocking yes. that pylon down. That's Bringing it around into this outter zone four. Nice job riding that wall. Just wow, giving a nice was, little uh, kiss at the end. Uh, I have to deduct uh, points off of line because of the tire drop at the outside zone one. Right there. And getting into the outside zone, I have to deduct. But other than that, I mean, line was perfect. Outside zone two. Outside zone three, he gets so deep to the wall. His rear bumper almost touches the wall. Fills the zone from the beginning. Man, this, man, that was a, yeah, I, I got excited, sorry. Yeah, he made it happen right there. There you Whoa. are, 90 right there. That was, I think that was the most angle I saw from anybody going from outside zone two to three. And he filled it really, really good. And I got to say, pretty manly. right before we went on live, he was saying, yeah, I'm a little nervous. I've been <laughs> yeah. driving a little nervous because we're like, what's going on? You're not driving like you usually do. Yeah, he's like, practice, he's yeah. like, the wall's a little intimidating. And then we were like, well, that's good that you drove bad in practice. That means you're going to drive good during the qualify competition. And he did. <laughs> and that proves it right there. Yep. See, practice makes perfect. But just because you're not doing good at practice, that doesn't mean that you're not going to do a qualify. So as long as look you're practicing, this. let's check this out. Drone, look at that right on the outside. Coming around, right on the outside, outside zone two. Coming around, right next to the wall right there. Probably even touched it. Right on the line, on the rear tire, outside zone three. And, and I know he that. touched it right Super there, close. yeah. It kicks up more angle towards the end at the finish line. So um, a couple of things that he could have done, could have, should have, would have, but overall, good job. That was a, a hands down to his 90 point run. Well, we'll see how this next driver is gonna go. Number 61, Mao Yamanaka in the Good Ride Motorsports, 890 Super. He got an 82 on his first qualify run. And I gotta say, he's been stepping up his angle game. First ever to win the FDJ2 series, the first ever series we ran two years ago. He was the champ moving in the pro. Look at that, way too much right there. Reverse angle into that outer zone one right there. Obviously an incomplete. Sitting on an 82, which is pretty nice right now. And talk about some insane angle after that one cone. Yeah. That's not going to be I know cool, it's not but, textbook for competition. Hey, but you know what? But that was awesome. That was cool. 
uh, round of applause, guys, to uh, Mao Yamanaka for putting on a show right here, kicking the car over, trying to do a backy here. And you know what? I mean, it's it's super possible to do a backy at this track. I mean, it might be narrow coming out of the bridge, but um, hey, it is possible. But like we always say, you know, I think it's cool for demo and stuff like that, but for competition, we prefer not to see. Backwards but hey, he's sitting I'm not on a hater. He's I'm sitting on an hater. 82, so oh, yeah, you know yeah. he just said, you know what? I'm gonna throw down, make it happen. I'm doing it for my good right team and the people that are out here supporting. But next up, let's see the support from the canola oil. There you go. There's the official incomplete for him. All right, let's see how this next driver throws down. Got an 80 on his first qualified run. He's a two-time champ, number 37, Koichi Yamasha. He's in the TMS Racing Team Silent Tire BMW. Let's see how he's gonna do this E92. He's usually in a JZX100, but hey, he still has a 2J power plant underneath that hood, and here he is, ripping through the chicane, now approaching this outer zone one. And here he is right there. Nice job through that outer zone one, filling that zone, bringing it back around into this outer zone two. Trying to adjust the car a little bit early on into that outer zone three. Wow. Keeping that back bumper all the way on that edge of both outer zones three and four. Yeah. So we were talking about at the driver's meeting, leaving the outside zone three, um, almost being straight, then trying to kick more angle out at outside zone four. Um, isn't ideal, but uh, he does a great job at outside zone one and two. Then right here, has to straighten the car a lot and uh, put on some angle at outside zone four. Let's go ahead and check out this closely. A little bit of room in outside zone two, but he does a great job at outside zone one and three, which are 10 points each. And right here at the outside zone four area, gets in fairly deep. We'll see, during tandem battle though, I, it's gonna be very nerve wracking for these drivers transitioning from outer zone two to outer zone three, because a lot of these drivers are gonna wait for their car to settle in into that outer zone three to get right back on it. Just kind of like what he did. He had a little bit of settling on yeah. the car in order to get where he wanted to be in that outer zone three. And if does good when there's a lot of speed when you can throw the car and throw a lot of angle. Now, outside zone two and outside zone three, yeah, he does fairly a good job, but takes out some angle as he goes into the outside zones. And that might be because, you know, the car is gripped up, but uh, style wise, Angle-wise, not as much, but a line. He did uh, really good on line, so he's the 82. He got two points bumped for him. 82 should be a solid uh, spot for top 32. Next up, sitting on a 77, number 212, Yutaro Oe in the Awa Tire Racing RX-7 FD3S. Three rotor, 700 horsepower car. Yeah, I think him and a few more drivers are 70, 70, 70. 78, 79 and in the 70s. The rest are all in 80s, so I mean, I don't know. It looks like the low 80s oh, yeah. is like that breaking be. point. It might be. Oh man, he's definitely waiting to qualify and knowing you're being on the bubble. <laughs> but hey, that top spot is still there. That 94 point Whoa! top spot. Look at that hard angle coming on. Oh, just hanging on right there. Dipping two tires, but I gotta say, he just missed the sponge barrier right there, bringing it back around into this outer zone three, real deep into that zone, but I gotta say, he is throwing down and making it wild out here for his second qualified run. A young driver coming out here, making it happen, and he was deep on that outer zone one line. Yeah, he was really, really deep, and he was a little bit too many tires off too, right there from the beginning, almost backwards entry. Yeah, that's a lot of tires off, getting into it deep. Does a good job at outside zone two. Right here, outside zone three, a little bit too late, or I'm sorry, kind of uh, kind of uh, going off of the track at outside zone three. Couldn't keep it within the line. And uh, that was a little bit too much of a, a little bit too much of a, a little bit of everything. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Proper English. Too much of a show there. But what it comes down to is manipulating this course, maximizing as many points as you can in those three areas. But we'll see. You can see some of the spectators out here fighting the sun. Valenti Banner taking a beating number. It's gonna, and he's gonna get another 77. 
two 77 point qualifier runs. You know, I know there's a lot of people that get some kind of score on the first run and then they just go hard and they just explode. Now you can't just blow up, you have to be precise as well to make sure you deliver what you're trying to show. And in this case, it looked like he tried to do something exciting, but it actually didn't work out for him. Next up at the line is number 58, Kazuhiro Kubo in the vacancies 180SX, sitting on a 78 currently. Yes, there is a 78 points here for Kubo, so I'm not even sure where the bubble is now. All right, here he is approaching the 3-2-1, bringing it back around into this outer zone one. Looks like he's letting the car coast a little bit through that zone, and yeah, huge mistake. Totally missing outer zone one, turning that outer zone two into the inside clip, essentially. Not able to fill all of outer zone four. Also, he was real shallow in that zone. Yeah, that was a lot of uh, uh, ways away from being deep into the outer zones right here. Leaving early right there, outer zone one, outer zone two, not even there. Yeah, he almost, I mean, outer zone two wasn't even there. It was like an inclip almost, where we used to have that two years ago. Yeah. Oh, hold on one sec. So we'll see what the judges are going to look at right now through the replay. You can see him bringing it around. He's currently sitting at a 78, and we're honestly not sure if that's going to make it. Hats off to y'all out there checking us out, viewing us live right now. You get to see where all the mistakes get made. There's no fast forwarding here. You're kind of stuck with us. But yeah, thank you all for chiming in on the chat. We've been checking in on it here and there, checking out the scores that you guys have been throwing down. So we do appreciate that. But yeah, here's another re review on Kubo's second qualify run, which we're talking about whether or not there was an incomplete or something major during that outer zone one to outer zone two correction. But yeah, let us know where you're chiming in from right now. Yeah, you know, we just reviewed some videos right now and you know, Kubo thought we're gonna score him, but he cut in so much at, you know, the beginning outside zone two and he corrected his steering so much. He didn't straight completely, but I mean, he would have pretty much put the chase car into the ball, and that was an unchaseable lead, and we're gonna have to go ahead and incomplete it. But you know what, to be honest, that incomplete, it, I mean, even if it wasn't an incomplete, that would have been a really, really, really low score. Exactly, yeah. especially missing that outer zone too completely. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever gave anybody a zero online at any of the zones today. Man, I see where y'all are chiming in from. Tell me where you're from. But till then, I got to jump on into this next driver. He's got a 79. You're going to jump onto him? I'm going to jump into jump into this ride right here. You're going to jump into his car? <laughs> <laughs> number three, Takatoshi Imamida. See, that's what I got to deal with. Now you guys know what I got to deal with right here. This is not just on the mic. This is all the time. He's going to be off the camera. Kenny's going to Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is what happens all the time. I'll put it on his uh, story, but here he is coming around. Ima Maida bringing around in the outer zone one. Nice shot filling that zone. Oh, looks like he stalled a little bit, making a huge mistake. Throwing too much angle, stalling the car out right there. After that outer zone one. That's three tires off at the inside of the outside zone. Two, so that's yeah, it's very cool. unfortunate. We'll check out that replay, but till then we got North Dakota out there. We got South Africa, New Mexico. Victoria, Victoria, Australia, Brazil, Atlanta, New Zealand, Mongolia, Jamaica, J Seattle. I was just in Seattle a few days ago. And that flag is something. Yeah. Just went to Seattle. There you go, the official incomplete right there. So 79 hey, Ohio, is what bank on. Your... There you go, Ohio. And I'll be moving to Texas, so any Texas people out there. Yeah, and you know what, uh, just to let you guys know, this is the second to last event that I'm going to be announcing with uh, for the Formula Drift Japan Series. Uh, Kenny is going to be stationed in Texas after this uh, month, so he's going to come back for the Okayama round, but I think that's going to be it. Uh, this is the last round of MPJ that he's going to be announcing as a person living in Japan. Exactly. It's been, a, 
Straight up blessing, but till then, yeah. Ming Ming. Let's go, Ming Ming. Let's see Ming Ming perform right now. He's got a 78. This is the 2022 Woo. Thailand Drift Champion. He's trying to show out right now. Little shallow in the outer zone two right there, but bringing it back around, filling all of outer zone three, right on that fine edge of outer zone three, making wow. it look good in the finish to outer zone four. So very impressive right there, trying to step up his 78 point first qualify run. Yeah, so that was a very, very, he's really tight on the line, I know that. He did miss outside zone he, he did miss a sizable amount of outside zone two, but he does still keep it really tight on the line, outside zone one, two, I'm sorry, one, three, and five. Now it's really up to what he gets for his uh, style score. Check this out from the drone footage. You saw the box, he cleared that. Barely gets into the outside zone two box, but right here on the line at the outside zone three. Very good job and fills the outside zone four uh, very well on the left side. There you go, it says Y, D, I, Y, Mr. DIY, and uh, Ming Ming with the 82. Nice job, he's in the 80s now. Hopefully that's gonna put him in a, uh, a safe spot in the top 32. But you know what, yeah, I think if you're in the 80s, I'm just guessing though, if you're in the 80s, you should be all right. So uh, hopefully these drivers. Yeah, most definitely, but this driver right here, he got first overall in qualify and first he podiumed out here last year. But right now he's sitting at an 81. He's got a huge hill to climb here against Hiroya Mino with a 94, but they're both driving the same car, so it's capable for him to beat him right now, right here. Get that top spot right here, bringing around outer zone one, getting right back on it, into this outer zone two. Nice job, look at that, kicking that smoke trail, bringing it back around early on in the outer zone three. Looks like he had a little bit of a delay into that transition to the outer zone three, but getting right back on it into the outer zone four. So here we are, look at that. Filling that outer zone one right there, full back edge of it, bringing it back around through outer yeah, zone two. Yeah, outside zone two very well and doesn't get in early at outside zone three, but ends up in a good spot. Now right here at outside zone four, they didn't show it, but uh, there we go. Um, with the with the drone footage, it's gonna be the help helping me out to see the outside zone four area. But feels outside zone two fairly well. Outside zone three. He was there, he just have, yeah, could have been deeper. Start to go into it deeper uh, later, and uh, looks like he has a little bit of space at outside zone four as well. So let's see how big of an improvement he'll get from his first 81 point qualify run. Yes, so Masayama, I'm not sure if that's going to beat the 94 point run though. Um, there's a few things, um, errors that he made, but it is 84 that uh, bumped his score up from 81. So uh, a good job by Masayama. And uh, we'll see after these few more drivers drive, we'll see who he's going to be going against. Exactly. And this next driver, he's one point ahead of him at an 85 right now, sustained a very bad crash yesterday after outer zone four into the concrete barriers but hey his team got it together tcp yes, magic did. made it happen took it back to the home uh the headquarters brought it back this morning fixed they probably have zero sleep mad mike said he was sore this morning but he's ready to perform for these viewers out there coming all the way from new zealand here he is ripping into that three two one in the outer zone one right into it right on it right there a little bit of a waiver adjustment right there after outer zone one but bringing it back around into this outer zone three Super deep, dipping two tires right there through that outer zone three into the outer zone four. And he's got me yelling on the mic for how loud he's <laughs> ripping and throttling through this track. Yeah, I think he was able to put down a safer run um, for his first run, but he was a little bit, um, a lot of adjustments uh, making it from the outside zone one to two. He kicks it out pretty good. Outside zone, outside zone two, dips the tire at outside zone three and uh, doesn't fill the outside zone four as much as he should be. Uh, but uh, looks like he's probably struggling physically and maybe the car not being back together fully. Uh, I would have to say this one's a little bit more exciting but not as clean as his first run. Exactly. If you guys could see, especially on the Formula Drift Japan page or even Mad Mike's uh, social media, the damage he sustained, it's insane to see the car out here performing the way it is. So we're going to see what this second qualifier run is going to do. I think he's pretty safe sitting at an 85 right now but uh, he's out here to perform for these spectators. And then for you guys out there that are viewing in, and I see all the comments, 
cheering him on. Um, he's trying to make a show for y'all. And here it is. Let's see the replay one more time, bringing it around into the outer zone one there. Yeah, and then just, just as we were talking about um, not capable of doing a few things where uh, I know he is hurt. His left shoulder is hurt. He was talking about not being able to yank the e-brake too much. Um, and they were doing something with the brake bias and something uh, to make the car capable of. But uh, he's going to have to settle with the the 75, or I'm sorry, 85 point run that he made for the first run. Exactly. I see y'all out there too. This is like my second job. He gets to he he lays down the judging score, and I just read the chat. Let's switch. Let's switch. No, I'm good. I don't need that kind of pressure on me. I'm already struggling trying to read the English. <laughs> There's the grandstand right there, fighting all the way through, just like y'all fighting sleep or waking up early for us. Thank y'all out there for tuning in to us on this live stream. We're going to be back live again tomorrow for Top 32 and then the Top 16 opening ceremonies to see who is going to be the champ out here for the 2023 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Round 5 here at Okuibuki, the Grand Snow Okuibuki. And I got to say, this was my first event four years ago. Wow. And I had to say Okuibuki. I want to see how many of y'all out there can say it that quick and that flu fluidly, I guess you could say. I definitely got me nervous. Yeah, so happy anniversary. Happy uh, Kenny being here for four years uh, with FD Japan anniversary. Yeah, and it is our 10th year anniversary hey, too. That's crazy. And you're, this is the last FDJ round and next weekend's FDJ2 round that you're going to be coming. You're going to come to the event as a resident living in, you know, Yokota Air Force Base in Japan. Yeah. You started here and you're ending here. You're I mean, right. You're coming you're back right. next month for Okayama too, but you're actually flying here, so you're going to be a non... A visitor yeah, you're at that be a point. Visitor. So yeah, you're right. It's it's bittersweet and it's all coming, you know, to be reality. Yeah, so, yeah, who cares about that? Let's go ahead and talk about <laughs> the driver. Car number 77, Yusuke Kusaba from Team Cusco Racing, already sitting on an 82. Let's see what he can do uh, to bring up his score. He's sitting 11th right now. He's just in the points reach. He's less than 100 points away from the first, his teammate that's leading the points race. And here he wow. is bringing in a nice job filling the outer zone too. He's stepped it up extremely this wow. year in this new GR86 built by Cusco Racing. And yeah, he stepped it up. We're gonna see if that's gonna be enough and how much it's gonna step up his 82 point first qualify run. Yeah, a little bit, a little, missed the outside zone four a little bit and uh, dipped the tire at the outside zone one area. But other than that, I think the line is pretty much fair, almost perfect. Just wanna make sure he's drifting through the finish line. Yeah, it did sound like he started slowing down up before. Nice job through that outer zone two, bringing it back around. Right on that back edge, look at you can see him kicking up the... All right, no, he lets off uh, super early, but uh, he does finish the track. Just wanted to double check make sure he's not letting off too early. Now line-wise, uh, a, a, a sizable improvement from his first run. Well, I said sizable, but two points. <laughs> That could be a, you know, make it or break it score too. So looking forward to seeing what he's going to get for his second run. Why don't you make a guess, Kenny? Score's already in, so. Six. Wow, is that because it's a GR86? It is. It just made sense. Whoa! Whoa! Kenny Yo. guessed it right. Yo, I guessed that right, and I wasn't even really paying wow. attention. Dude, you're judging. Here, let's change. No, I'm let's good. Switch. Wow, congratulations to Kusaba moving up from 82 to 86. So let's see how his partner here that is sitting on an 86, Hokuto Matsuyama in the Cusco Racing GR90 or A90 uh, Supra. Sorry about that. I, GR Supra. Su GR Supra, yeah. There he is. Let's see how he's going to rip here up into this 3-2-1, bringing in. Look at that hard oh. angle right there. No. Take it out, two by one close. No. Just holding on. No. Oh. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, he, <laughs> he, he got, kicked it out and it did oh, not look like it's hey, gonna work. I'm so glad those uh, the barrier cushions are there because that would have been. Yeah, I mean, we could move those. <laughs> no, but I think the drivers are happier with them being there. 
Look at that. That oh. was a little bit too much. And you could see hitting that cone tripped him yeah, up. You, you could see the guys that were at the entrance of the pits. As soon as he starts sliding, they start running. And I think they probably ran for it. Oh, you know what? The car is actually not that bad. I know that those barriers are amazing. I actually took one home as a pillow last night. <laughs> I couldn't suffer with the bean pillows. There you go, incomplete, official right there. Did you guys guess that one? <laughs> no, but uh, he went in hard. I think he went for, uh, you know, a lot of impact, but somehow there was some kind of mistake probably he made uh, getting into the entry of the outside zone one. Yeah, he did make impact. Yeah, that was a lot of impact with the sponge in the wall, but um, but he's going to be, you know, banking on the 86-point run that he had. So there you go. Run. The Cusco Racing Girls are very sad for him. That's very unfortunate, but he got an 86. Should be pretty safe, but this next driver that's going to be coming up as they fix this barrier wall, he's currently, oh, it looks like they're taking a look at his car right now. They're going to show one more replay. Look at that. Catching that Okay, they might be looking for the cone that might yeah, be lodged I, in the car. Yeah, I, I think he got on the cone, he got on the cone, and then the cone became like the McDonald's tray on your rear tire yeah, type exactly. of deal. Yeah, Kind of gave him the extra, you know, boost and sliding him sideways. Trip. Yeah, so it might have, uh, it might have popped out of nowhere and surprised, um, surprised Masi, Masiyama, but. Um, we do have the three, two, one cones already, like two meters away from the line. So you're right. Yeah. When you're on, when you're on that, when you're hitting that with your rear tire, most likely you're a little too off. Um, oh, he was a half a car lane out off the track already. Yeah. So, unfortunate for him, but looks like the next driver is getting ready to go, getting his tires warmed up. He's currently sitting at a 91. He was our number one person to get into the 90s. He had a 91. Here he is, Kanta in the Ling Long Tire Drift, Team Orange JZX100 Chaser. Pulling up to the line, pushing roughly about 850 horsepower. We're gonna see how he's gonna do, because man, this kid cannot lay off the gas. Yeah, it's like a, a on switch. And I know now that he is second place in qualifying right now. He's a 91. And he's you know, tied, you know, actually. Yeah. Oh, he's tied to a 91. Yeah. Yes, he is. Because right sorry. now his, uh, his Sobagiri sitting in third is out, also got a 91. So we're going to see. Well, Sobagiri got a 90. Yeah, Sobagiri got a 90. So sorry about that. Wrong information for Kenny. But uh, he's sitting second <laughs> in the qualify. I'm trying to spice things up here. And uh, he's going to put down something amazing. And here he is coming in hot into the outer zone one, just hanging ah. on right there, taking off the pylon through outer zone one, but real deep into that zone, bringing it back around, driving like a madman out here on the edge of every zone, real deep through outer zone one. If he could have cleaned up outer zone one, I got to say that, that probably would have boosted up his 91 point first qualify run. Yeah, I'd have to say that's a, a tire off too at the outside zone three, got a little bit too deep. Um, and uh, yeah, that was a very deep at the outside zone uh, one area. Those are the only deduction. He was really deep on the outside zone two and uh, outside zone four too. But a uh, couple of the deductions that we have for the line, he had a better line score actually on his first run. Bringing it back around. Yeah, yeah, he had to take out angle from outside zone one to two to make it work. I think everybody is, you know, going for that top spot, but it's really, really hard to catch because that was a really perfect run uh, made by that, you know, just turned 14 year old. So we'll see. This is going to be enough, which I don't know. He dipped a lot of tires out. 84 for 84. a second run. So 91, he is still sitting in second. So who is going to knock him down to third or fourth or fifth? Is it going to be any of these other drivers? We have about nine drivers. We got left. eight drivers now, right now.
eight drivers. Here he is coming through the chicane, number 555. Yukio Fausto got an 86, fourth overall last year here. I told him he's due for a podium. Here he is coming around this outer zone one to outer zone two. 86 is a pretty safe score for qualify right now. And man, he looks very aggressive out there, but he maybe was too aggressive through that outer zone one. Yeah, and even with this bumper extended, he came a little short out outside zone two area and uh, left outside zone one a little too early. And right here, uh, not a whole lot of angle too going in the outside zone two. So I would have to say, you know, uh, I'm guessing his first run was probably a little bit more uh, put together uh, clean. So we'll see here. 86, currently sitting at an 86 right now, which is a pretty safe score. We're going to see if the judges are going to give him a little bit more points or is he going to be stuck with that 86 into the top 32? What do you think? It's probably, there you go, 70 <laughs> 73. Yeah, so the 86 is going to be the magic number for uh, Yukio Fausto making it into the top 32. So uh, yeah, we are boiling down to seven more drivers. We'll find out where these drivers will be placed and who they will be going against. And uh, another driver to look out for is, you know, Swim Just USA driver currently um, coming from the US, just flew in a few days ago, Ken Gushi. Finished third at Sugo, didn't have the best of luck at Seattle with car issues, but here he is coming around into this outer zone one. It looks like his car is performing very well this weekend. Look wow. at that, nice job through that outer zone two, getting right back on it here into wow. this outer zone three. Look at that, on the back what? edge of outer zone three. Nice job by Ken Gucci what? right there, finishing strong into that outer zone four. So I'm just talking about line, but that was, he dipped the tires, so I have to give him a deduction for that. But everything else pretty much looked pretty perfect to me. And uh, he upped, he had a high line score earlier for his first run. He did even better this time. Exactly, very aggressive. Look at that smoke trail behind him. Right there, transitioning back around, getting right back into it, into that outer zone three. Nice job. Man, beautiful job. Car is performing amazing. And here he is, look at you can see him knock out that because that's how close he was in that outer that's zone the four. outside zone four, yeah. Yeah, there's that wall, so beautiful job. Look at this, look at, look at the, I mean, perfect. Right on the line on the outside, outside zone two. Right on the line right there, outside zone three. And right there, snap that uh, end plate on the GT wing on the wall, but the car does not move. Very, very clean. And I would say one tire off at the outside zone one area. Oh, ho, ho, Boom, 91. 91. 91, and he is going to be tied. No, He's looks gonna like... be tied with Kanta, but his second score is the 87, so, so Kanta like... got knocked down to third. Exactly. Wow. What a way to come back. Got third in Sugo last round a month ago, four weeks ago, and here he is coming in performing. It's probably boosting his confidence too. The car is working well. He did go you to know. the temple. <laughs> yeah, there that's you right. go. There you go. Mr. You need something done right, go to the temple. Exactly. And here we are next up. Tetsuya Hibino going to throw some sick angle. Look at that coming in. Nice flick right there. Reverse entry pretty much, but able to lock it in back around into this outer zone too. And we have, this isn't the first we've seen from on practice. He did this before. Look at riding that edge on outer zone three. Nice job by Tetsuya Hibino right there, finishing strong. 84 for his first qualify run. We're going to see what the judges are going to give him because, man, that entry was insane. Look at that right there. Huge flick right there. Man, huge flick, he held it, made it happen, filled all the zones. We'll see here. That was really cool, but um, going back to what we were talking about, you know, that was a backwards entry, or a, pretty much a backy, so he did have to pull out, um, he had to pull out the angle from the car, like right here. A lot of angle, but then right there, having to have to make adjustments and pull out an angle going to the outside zone too, um, and adjustments. And I think uh, 
Mino is trying to make a statement where trying to make a statement where he says, you know, he has the craziest entries, and he does. But uh, something that we do want to see. Yeah, that a was little a, bit too much. Yeah, that was insane though. But he was able to hang on to it, make minor corrections into that, yeah. approaching that outer zone. And too. you know, like those of you probably think, like, whoa, that was dope, you know. And it is, but you know, it is something that we have to look at. There you go, 83. Yeah, at the end of the day, he is doing a lead run closest to 100 points because that's what it comes down to when the tandem battles, when they're throwing down. We always see it. Good tandem battles all leads from the lead driver. Is all led by the lead driver. Yes. All right, we are down to the last five drivers, our top five drivers right now, which this driver is tied with Hibino, number 311, Naoto Suenaga in the Atlas Tire Drift, Team Fukushima, RZ34, Fair Lady Z. 79 is what he's sitting at. It's got the shell of the 400Z on a 370Z chassis, bringing it around. Got the v VR under the hood. Swinging it back around into this outer zone three here. It's looking a lot cleaner than his first 79 point qualify run. Yeah, so it looks like he filled the zones a little bit better than his first run. Now looking at angle, I would have to say he is one of the drivers that has slightly less. Uh, so it really looks like or really depends on what the angle judge is going to give him the score. It looks like he's doing his job and, at, at all the zones and overall on the track. So um, looking forward to seeing, he has a 79 for his first run, but I think that's probably gonna be something a little bit higher uh, than his old score. There you go, 83. 83 for him. So a little boost in points, which is definitely gonna flex a lot of these scores, because I think 80s, you're safe, but the mid to low, higher 70s, you might not be. Yeah, so the impact uh, Hubino showed reminds me of this driver because this driver during practice as well, a lot of impact. It's uh, uh, Masanori Kohashi from Ling Long Tire Jip Team Orange driving the A90 Supra, sitting on an 81. Look at that, huge aggression, huge angle coming Look into that, that outer no zone one. No aggression. Angle. Bringing it around into that outer zone two, swinging it back early on right there, outer zone three, filling that zone completely. Uh, oh. He was a, he didn't fill outside zone three from the beginning, missed a little bit, but uh, I have to check on the outside zone four. Outside zone ten was pretty much perfect. He did not, did, I don't think he. Outside zone what? On the line, didn't dip the tire, he was on the line. Outside zone two, a little bit more deeper. Beginning of outside zone three, but let's go ahead and check out his outside zone four area. It looks like he wasn't too close to the outside zone four wall, um, so there's a few deductions there. And Robbie meant outside zone one was a 10. One, there you go, yeah. He called it outside zone 10. I was like, wait, where are we at? Outside zone 10 is uh, in my imagination. Right, yeah. Yeah, he you was know, a little actually, shallow, that was, yeah. That was yeah, he was he was real shallow in that outer zone four, and that's where that wall is. That's where that wall meets that zone. Yeah, so this is definitely going to be better than an 81 point run, and his initiation was pretty crazy because he oh something exciting that I heard because the style judge just uh, told me a little secret. You guys will find out soon because that entry was amazing. No fixing angle. He threw it perfectly to max angle. Drove through outside zone one. That was pretty sick. All right, they're excited for the point score right here. There you are, 94. 94. And like Robbie said, style points right 40 there. Points. 90 points. 90 points for angle. That was pretty much a perfect run. That's um, crazy. Style wise and everything. Style wise and everything by Kohashi. 94 points. He's tied with. Minoa right now. That came to the last four drivers. That's insane. Wow. We still got last three. Yeah, we do. Drivers coming up. We so. got two more drivers that got to knock down this 94 point score. I agree with the style judge. That was, I thought that outside zone one and the way he handled that, it was pretty much perfect because he threw it to max angle. Didn't have to pull any angle out. Stayed on gas uh, to uh, the outside zone. 
Here you go, let's see if Sobagini could better the 94. All right, Sobagini sitting at a 90 right now. Here he is coming around, filling that zone. Bringing it back around into this outer zone three early on right there, filling that zone early on. Nice job through outer zone three and into that outer zone four. Uh, we'll see here. His outside zone one, it looked like he had to adjust himself to stay there. Let's go ahead and check this out. I think he also had a tire dip at the, yeah, there you go, outside zone one. But yeah, there's some e-brake holes going after the entry, not before the entry. And uh, he leaves outside zone two a little bit early. Um, and, you know, trust me, we're being very picky because we have to. Um, does a fairly good job at outside zone four, but he gets a perfect score from me on the line at outside zone three, so. So a lot of these drivers are doing something that is, you know, out of this world right now with these cars, these vehicles. Very exciting, um, and let's see. Let's see if he's going to better his 90 or not. We'll what do you think? Here. What do you think, Kenny? Uh, it's close. I mean, he did a really good job on the line, but I think he's close to about that same score, maybe an 88. Wow, oh, 91. 91. I was wrong. Man, no, you said about the same score, but here you go, Kenny. Kenny the judge. Nope, I, I wasn't spot on. But yeah, we actually went to go visit him uh, what yeah, is let's it, last it, week. Yeah, let's go ahead and give the, uh, 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 the style judge, Sean, fired. Kenny, yeah. <laughs> Sean, can you talk? <laughs> you got Ima Murr over here trying to give me his pad to give the judge a score. I'm good. Hey, we got two. I, actually, we got two left, so I guess I yeah, can knock. Yeah. Actually, these are the hardest right here because these hey, are the so, top two so drivers. Guys, Kenny is going to guess the next two runs, and we're not going to tell him what we, you know, gave individually. So let's gotta, see how close he can be. I actually got to pay attention. Yeah, you got to pay attention. All right, right now you have number 36, Kazumi Takahashi, He's sitting at the line. He has an 89 right now. Been very aggressive, sitting second overall on points. And here he is coming around, huge angle, filling Whoa. that zone. Nice job filling that zone, bringing it back around. A little shallow in the outer zone two, but bringing it back around into outer zone three early on right there, riding that back edge, outer zone three. Nice job through there. Ah, uh, he left, he didn't looks feel like, four so good. Yeah, it looks like he messed up on four. But see, that, that was like, I guess 90, I, I guess you could say him, that run, and also Kohashi, that was like 90 degrees. Pretty much perfect on the line. Doesn't feel outside zone too well. And right here, he goes in nice at outside zone three, but uh, he leaves it a little bit early and outside zone four. Gonna have to double check that. Um, not as deep as I think he is. I think when you get, when you throw too much angle to outside zone three, it kind of makes you uh, not be able to feel outside zone four as well. Man, we're down to the last two drivers here. And look at that, throwing that kind of angle into that outer zone one and holding on to it. No, really no adjustments, too much adjustments come there. But that outer zone two definitely affect, is gonna affect his score. But I gotta say aggression all the way through, throughout this track. Yeah, I'm just double, because I mean, we're, we're coming down to like one point can make, you know, the. Yeah, 89 is what he got initially on his first qualify run. Yep. What is it, Kenny? Uh oh. So low, Kenny. I say low 90s for sure. 92. Oh, 92. There I said go. I said 91 originally. So hey, 92. Wow. All right, this is what it comes down to here, right here. This next driver, it's our last driver, points leader, sitting at 248, just got, had his birthday four days ago. You know, he says he hasn't got his gift yet. So let's see if, you know, he can get rewarded with at least a small trophy for getting top in qualify. Well, if he wants to get top in qualify, he's oh, gonna he have to get a higher score than the 81. Exactly, so we're gonna see how it's gonna go for him. He's sitting at a 94 right now. It's gonna be number 771, Hiroya Mino in the Cusco Racing GR Yaris. All right, so tied at a 94 right now. This 14 year old is about to do his second run to get the top spot for qualifying. If he gets over 81, he is the number one qualifier here. He's locked it in, here it is right here. And that could be it. That could be two GR Yaris's back to back season. Okayama or Okuibuki 
lead, and here he is, look at it, nice shot through outer zone two, here he is bringing it back around. Oh! Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> he spun! He ruined oh it right God. there! Oh my God! Oh. That was one spin away! That was one spin away! That was one and a half zones one. away, so what are you talking gave, about? He gave the number one spot to Kohashi. Oh man, he gave it away! <laughs> I got up. Look at that, he, he made beautiful job, outer zone one, filling that zone completely. Yeah, I was like thinking outer 81 zone two. points, easy. Boom, right there. And just oh, overcooking the tires through the start of outer zone three. Oh my God. And you know what, we're talking about championship points. Qualifying first and qualifying second, it's a little bit, you know, you, you get more score or you get more points for the first qualifier, so. Oh, yeah, uh, Kohashi's only sitting four behind him. Right now, Kohashi's yep. sitting at um, 224, so he's sitting 24 points behind Minoa right now in points. Yeah, number one qualifier gets seven points. Number two qualifier gets six points. So Kohashi, Kohashi is now two point points closer. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man, I got way too excited. Sorry about that, guys. Started to scream in the mic. So frustrating right there for him. I know his spotter, which I believe is his mom, she's probably like, oh no, because she had a feeling of what he had to get. Hopefully chimed in his ear like, hey, just put a solid run down. You just need an 81 or higher. But you can see right there, Mino was trying to throw another 94 Yeah, you know what, I, I like that because he's like, you know what, forget about just getting an 81. I want to get over a 94. And uh, he went for it and unfortunately didn't make it. Uh, but I like um, that hustle that these drivers made. And thank you to all the drivers that made it out here and also all the uh, teams out here. Um, we're having a great time and I think uh, the audience is and also hope you guys um, on the other side of the live stream are having a great time as well. Yes, thank you all out there for tuning in, sticking around with us. It's been a long qualify session. It's been roughly about three hours of qualifying that we had today, but tomorrow we have top 32 kicking off early on in the morning. Go to the to the Instagram or Facebook page for Formula Drift Japan. The schedule will be out there. We're actually gonna post the schedule here soon on the mic. There we are, that's us up here, all the way up here, right outside of outer zone four. I don't even know where the camera's at, but. No, I can't even see right now, but oh, there's a camera right there in front of us. Oh, there is. You've been watching us this whole time. Thank you very much for sticking around and we're gonna be back tomorrow for the top 32. It's gonna be very exciting. I guarantee that, I think. No, it's going to be a smoke it's gonna be show. Really yeah. Good. So, yeah, make sure you come back and check that out. Uh, thank you for having us right here. We got Tom Saiba to the right, uh, uh, Nobutero Taniguchi, then also Yoji Mamura, um, the three Japanese uh, commentators and judges that we have for the Japanese live stream side. So, thank you for sticking around with us. And, uh, yeah. We're, I'm, man, I just want, man, we should start top hey, 32 right now. And if you want more entertainment, go check Robbie's Instagram out. No. Because he's got beautiful footage off of his old school phone of all of his cool reels that he's putting together. But no, I'm just, I'm just joking around. But yes, thank y'all out there for chiming in on the chat, keeping us alive out here and uh, awake. Yes. And hopefully we'll see y'all tomorrow for top 32, top 16. And hey, this is the second to last time you're going to hear just me and Robbie on the mic. Because next weekend we have FDJ2, FDJ3, which is going to be a one live stream, one channel for both English and Japanese. So a little bit less talking on my part, I guess. Yeah, so I wonder if we're going to, I'm not sure if we're going to go into the uh, interview for the number one qualifier because we currently have the number one qualifier. It's going to be Kohashi, I believe, tied with a 94, but his second run uh, was a better score than an incomplete that uh, Minoa did. So uh, we might not be going to that. If we are, we are. If not, I think we're going to have to say our goodbyes here. And yeah, tune back in tomorrow for the top 32. It's going to be 4.35 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Standard Time. And um, in F, I'm sorry. In FD Japan, like Japan time, the Pacific time that we have, uh, we I have a uh, time schedule right here. Let me go ahead and grab that. As he's grabbing that, I gotta throw a shout out and thank you to Joyce out there. She's always making it happen, giving you guys the qualify score, the brackets up top. She's giving you guys, answering your questions on the live chat. So thank you to Joyce out there, sticking with us, staying up late and hanging out with us. And thank you, Joyce, and thank you. Yeah, there's some complications on the US side with the live stream, but we were able to figure it out. So the first maybe 20 minutes of me and Kenny were blabbing got cut. So we, we saved you some, we saved you some, 
time and yeah. saved you saved you from from being from being crin from cringing. But uh, yeah, tomorrow's top 32 here is going to start at 9:10 a.m. Uh, Japan time. So uh, that's around the time that we're going to start the live stream. So make sure you don't miss that as well, because I guarantee it's going to be some good uh, tandems here. We always have good tandems here. Exactly, especially how much smoke they throw down in the horseshoe setup. It's going to be pretty interesting on how they're going to battle it out and fight through the smoke battles between each other. And we're going to go into the interview of Kohashi. So we're going to go ahead and go show you the top run, the replay of the top run right here, which is Kohashi's 94 point run. Go. Look at that perfect way to put the car sideways. Full lock, full angle. Full angle to angle. I hope a lot of these drivers that we talk to they can't figure it out. I just want them to get the full Now here's Kohashi's interview. はい、えっとですね、まあ、あの、1になったのはあの、すごく嬉しいんですけども、あの、すいません。何よりも嬉しいのが、え、チームメイトの簡単に勝ったのがとにかく嬉しくて、え、まあもう、とにかくそれが
And that's it right there. That's going to wrap us up for the 2023 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Round 5 Qualifying here at Grand Snow, Okuibuki, in the Shiga Prefecture. You tuned in to myself, Kenny Harris, alongside and, uh, me, Robbie Nishida. Nishida. And also a uh, guest judge from the U.S., John Adriano, all the way from the USA. Thank you for joining us. And uh, also, uh, thanks for sticking around. Good night, goodbye, and uh, good morning to some of you guys. We will see you guys tomorrow at the Top 32. さと安全性。オンロード。オフロード。世界中で活躍するケンダ。その信頼を支える。西洋性、安定性と対魔法性。世界が認めた技術と信頼を街のりで。コーヒースとナットクの価格、太陽のポテンシャルをあなたにケン
What's up guys? It's Freddy Gospo and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. Made in Japan. Breed. Had a brand new bend again all the way through. Just throws a early transition. In a world of extremes. This is where they're refined. The real deal. Cusco. Tentou to Kakshin. Ogura Clutch no technology of Gyoshiku. Champion of Tortamen Clutch. Ogura Racing Clutch. ORC.